welcome, welcome, blah, welcome. <laughs> Episode sixteen. Good um, start. we, yeah, we're recording again in the evening. Um, and I've I've had my evening tipple, so <laughs> this is going to be a fun one. Um, so I am your co-host Kylie Wild, and I'm joined by Pete Beckett, and uh, we are going to bring you a great show. Um, where where one yeah. half is drunk and one half is completely sober. <laughs> That's the way it should be. <laughs> um, Don't know. About so, that. yeah. <laughs> How was your week, Pete? Uh, it was all right. Work was work, and the weekend <laughs> was is. was a busy one filled with birthday celebrations and all that. So I can't can't complain too much, really. But I'm just Very good. just eager to get in get in and record again. Yeah, um, it's funny how it's become a very much routine for me. Um, yeah. I kind of look forward to it, actually. <laughs> yeah, it got a little bit weird on Sunday afternoon when it was like, oh, I'm supposed to be recording. Nope, I'm going out for once. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, actually, last week's um, recording, I actually forgot that we weren't doing it on Sunday. <laughs> and so I was sitting there at like 12 noon going, Where, where's Pete? Where?" Where's Pete? And I was like, oh, yeah, he told me. <laughs> it's Monday. Yeah. So I was like, oh, yeah. But um, but we're here today, and yeah. we have a great show. And it was only 24 hours less uh, behind That's normal, true. which I got it up on Tuesday morning, which was which was pretty good, I think. Yeah, I think it was really good. And yeah. it actually turned out to be the most listened to episodes. Yes, it was. It was, uh, a, it was yeah. a good one. I really enjoyed the conversation. With oh, you. I... I very much enjoyed it. Um, I like that very much. Um, yes. Yeah. Good. Yeah. And those controversial topics are always a fun love, one. Love. have to love controversy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I felt we covered it with quite a lot of tax, actually. Oh, definitely. Definitely. Absolutely. Even-handed, all that good stuff. Um, yeah. And stuff. But that <clears throat> leads us to our uh, latest news, which yeah. is always fun. So yeah. what's happening this week? Oh, we got some real doozies of a news story this week. We've got, <laughs> yes, we do. We've got one nice touching story, one mm -hmm. funny story, and one controversial story. Our favourite! Yes. <laughs> and if I was to say to you the touching story was to involve 2K games, what the hell would you think about that one? I would have thought you were lying to me, and you've been replaced by a replicant. <laughs> yeah, I have been replaced by Android Wilson. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Oh, I cannot believe it. But yes, mm -hmm. tell so, us about 2K Games. So 2K Games, in the wake of Kobe Bryant's death, actually mm -hmm. put up an in-memoriam picture at the beginning of NBA 2K20. That actually is is very good for them. Um, they, <laughs> they are not known for uh, doing things correctly. No, they're not. But they got that one right. Yes. Uh, I wonder so how that... much it cost them to put that on there, though. Ooh. <laughs> oh, yeah, because there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes that, that yeah. we don't know. And uh, Kobe Bryant is a, how do you say it, a property. So yeah, they had to. Definitely is. And yeah. I, I wouldn't be surprised if an ultra-rare Kobe Bryant um, now becomes one of the rarest properties on the uh, my team oh definitely oh definitely um oh god yeah i just like boom like all the marketing possibilities just flooded my mind yeah. um which is a terrible thing but that is what happens uh mm. you, you see it with uh you know even elvis's estate um oh, that's a nightmare to be honest oh gosh that's the thing when a celebrity passes and and let's face it kobe bryant is a celebrity as well as a sportsman yep. um yep. uh when a celebrity passes they actually become a very valuable asset oh i hate saying that but <laughs> yeah but it's business talk though that's how it is looking at it it. is looking at the facts and figures on the page the fact exactly and the fact that 2k the 2k games out of anyone uh, was able to secure that is that actually speaks quite well for them 
Yeah, it does. And I, I'm glad that oh, they've done something nice to pay back all those people uh -huh. who actually got fleeced over by them over the many, many years that they've been oh, doing gosh. this kind of thing. You know, yeah, but absolutely. I, I wanted to mention this because I, I don't think 2K get enough credit when they do something right. Yeah, I can agree with that. Yeah. But, yeah, because, yeah. I mean, as a basketball fan, it was quite hard to read about Kobe Bryant's passing the other day, even though I'm a Celtics fan. It was like, <laughs> uh, well, he's a legend, to be fair. That word is thrown around a bit lightly. Uh, is, isn't thrown around lightly. You know, he is mm -hmm. one of the greats of, you know, the NBA history. You know, yeah, and he, he definitely has a place. place. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Um, being that I'm from Texas, I, of course, am a Rockets fan first, oh, and uh, then a Spurs fan second. So. <laughs> well, yeah, because they're the only two teams that you have in all of all of the states. They are. They are. It's so, true. No, I mean... <laughs> hey, but when the Rockets went to uh, the uh, NBA Finals, yeah. like 10 years ago, 20 years ago, <laughs> console, um, I watched every every game oh, oh of course you did yeah i, I mean yeah. it, it always surprises me that the uh the playoffs are like they're mm. such long-winded affairs because they're like best oh, they are. games aren't they yes that's exactly right um they're very exciting uh mm. that's it's the same thing with with me it's the same thing for uh baseball as well i'm actually a baseball fan as well but um i get i become more of a fan the end yeah <laughs> i know when i know who the 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 the, the finals are going to be so uh, yeah. it's kind of same thing as basketball it, the the thing is that's always confused me about baseball is the fact <laughs> that the showpiece game in all of the season is the world series but only basically america <laughs> and japan can play baseball i knew you were going to say that and canada we have one one team i think and the toronto uh is it? Oh, the it's Blue the Jays? Toronto Blue Jays. Yes. And, uh, oh, I so know more about baseball than you. <laughs> well, I was saying Toronto Blue Jays, and then my brain was bringing up like the Cardinals, and <laughs> I don't know why. I was like, no, that's not right. Um, but yeah, it is funny that it's called the World Series. Uh, yeah, it does make me laugh. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, this is enough. For, that's enough for the uh, basketball or sports related podcast. Yeah, no sports talk. <laughs> Yeah, I could actually do a sports cast, to be honest. I really could too, to be honest, because I do love sports. I love playing them. <laughs> well, I like watching them. Oh. I'm definitely an armchair <laughs> fan. Oh, if I could, if I ever can find the time, I'm so getting on a rugby women's team. Oh, oh you should do that. Oh, I'd be so good at it. <laughs> yeah, you would. <laughs> then, oh. then the only thing is, they might try and stick the pads on you and think you're an American football player. Well, that's true too. Oh my gosh! Oh, they get serious in rugby. They are not. There is no joke. Yeah, they don't mess around. <laughs> no, they do not. Oh, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, we will yeah. move on. Uh, yes. So, do you want controversy or do you want fun? Uh, let's start with controversy since it's our favorite. <laughs> yes, we love a bit of controversy here. Absolutely. And this one happens to be about a game that you had mentioned in our game oh. preview for 2020. Yes, I've been looking forward to it. Warcraft 3 Reforged came out on the 28th of January and has upset <sighs> players. Yes. Why? Now, why has it upset players? Many, many reasons. <laughs> I was going to say. <laughs> so, I did a lot of looking into this, a lot of mm -hmm. watching videos from people like Jim Sterling, Yong Year, mm -hmm. Review Tech USA, all the usual suspects, you know. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. Um, they managed to pretty much cover this quite well. So um, most of this is going to come off of their thing. So the information has come off their videos. So what they have done is they have updated the launcher for the old Warcraft 3 to mm -hmm. the new launcher. Meaning that all the bugs that have happened in this game <laughs> are now concurrent on the old version of the game. Basically yes. forcing people to upgrade to the new version, despite the fact that no other game in history has ever done this. <laughs> yes. Um, uh. There was also a policy change on B Activision Blizzard's part that mm -hmm. meant that any game mode or 
subsequent <sighs> subsequent game game that was made using their engine is officially their intellectual property. So things yes. that were made using the engine, like Dota, yep. would never ever happen again. Yeah, I am very disappointed. Um, although to say that disappointment and Blizzard haven't gone hand in hand in the last couple of years, yeah, yeah I, I know. I, I don't know if it happened when Activision acquired Blizzard. Um, I although I so. strongly, yeah, I strongly believe that it it did happen then. Um, yeah, they have. They've just done a disservice after disservice, and yeah. I hate that. I mean, I used to be part of the Overwatch uh, community, mm-hmm. and it's just you can't, you can't now. You just can't. There's no. They've changed the rules. They've changed. They've nerfed everyone, and yeah. then, you know, and then I was looking forward to Warcraft Three, as I uh, said in a previous episode, mm-hmm. um, and then they've. Basically, just by setting that standard, they've now ruined the modding community. Oh, which I'm so disappointed with that. Like the modding community <sighs> has always been so good. Oh, they have. They really have. Uh, because even even modding, you know, uh, the World of Warcraft, uh, mm-hmm. the MMORPG. For anyone who doesn't know. Uh, <laughs> which is hard to believe. But let's let's say someone out there doesn't know. Um, that that in and of itself is a great publicity, uh, you know, thing for them. Um, yeah, lots is. of videos are shared among the community and, you know, modded videos are shared and, yeah. uh, uh, or videos of mods, I should say, um, and, and things like that. It, it, it's just a very strong community. And I, of course, love the modding community and just about anything um, yeah, because they modded Fallout absolutely. 4 to the version exactly you today. exactly um, <laughs> I definitely have not made that a secret no I mean I love the modding community and yeah me too I mean there's some there's some mods that I've I've used over the years especially on mm-hmm. uh, Unreal Tournament oh um, yes I, I, oh. I had I had the Bender skin for a long time. Oh, nice! Yes, and absolutely. Dies, it's like when he's um when he's getting high on electricity. <laughs> nice. It was, it was brilliant. I did oh, love it. That's great. The Mr. Burns one was also brilliant as well. Whenever he dies, he's like Smithers. What's happening? <laughs> See, that's good. And then Quake. Oh my gosh, oh, Quake had a good ones for Quake. Oh, they had the X Men skins. Oh, I was oh, like so in good. heaven. I was like I'm never playing anything ever again (laughs) (laughs) but so i hate to hear this uh about blizzard but i do i mean i hate to say that i understand because i don't but i see i can see their point of view as far as like dota of course took off yeah and Um, and the fact was is that um blizzard didn't take the opportunity to actually purchase dota so um valve got it and it's sold exclusively yeah. on steam and it's a multi yeah. billion dollar um enterprise now and i'm sure they're kicking themselves for actually if i i'm going to be a bit bold and say that i bet it's not even blizzard that's kicking themselves it's activision i bet it's um, activision yeah activision has been money hungry since freaking 1972 i don't know <laughs> <laughs> it feels like it. Um, uh, I so... remember a day where Activision didn't used to be that bad. Oh, I know it's oh. rare to think of that, but that was back in the nineties. Oh my gosh! Yeah, I can't even. I can't even visualize it. Um, they are. Ugh, they're yeah, something else. I know. They're something else. Yeah, I mean, but I did used to love them. I did. Yeah, uh, so did I. I mean, they did yeah. make some really good games. I'll take nothing away Absolutely. from the Call of Duty franchises. Yeah. Like gangbusters over the years. I mean, I've fallen off of it, but um, yeah. like Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare is still one of the best FPS games out there. Oh, I have to agree. As someone who loves FPS games, yes, Call of Duty Modern Warfare remains um, one of the top games. Um, mm. And I just... But I mean... I don't know what's happened once they acquired Blizzard um, and they acquired, I think, 
I forget who else they required, but they're quite a few studios. They're quite a few. They amassed quite a few. They've got yeah. a lot of well-known, well-named properties. Yeah. Uh, and it's just been a onslaught of money grubbing, money grubbing, money grubbing. It has. I think this yeah. is going to cause cause them a fair amount of problems, especially since one of the things I didn't mention was a, a pre-release um, cutscene that was redone in the Reforged Engine was actually missold to people. Oh, dear. So it was supposed to have a dynamic cinematic camera mm -hmm. and be, you know, sort of be mo quite movie-styled. Right. Um, not anymore. So the, <sighs> the camera is now at an angle, sort of, from a distance, and it's not sort of, oh, you know, cutscened like that, and the text is on screen now. The graphics have had a downgrade since then. So what they sold you at BlizzCon 2018 mm -hmm. is not actually what you're playing now, which is quite which is, terrible. It's a very big disappointment. Yeah. That, um, that's false I've, advertising I've, and most companies will get done for that. That's very true. Um, I mean, I've, I've, I've said it before, but Warcraft 1, 2, and 3 are some of my favorite uh, resource management games. Yeah. Um, I absolutely love them. I am a fan of resource management. And so I was very much looking forward to this. Uh, oh, gosh. I don't even know. Now I, I watch videos and I think I might not. I might not go to it. I might not. Well, you Ugh. definitely can't now. Because if you wanted to go and play the well, original version, that's not happening. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's, it's such a shame. I don't. It is. Like, personally, I don't understand why they've updated the launcher and all the netcode to 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 work concurrently across both versions effectively pretty much ruining one like the original version of the game yeah because i mean if i remember correctly it was one of the first games that i know that i played that had like a, a drm type of thing yeah um and i i resented it i resented it back then um yeah. and so here we are god i don't even want to say like 15 years later. <laughs> oh my gosh, I know. Um, you know, and we're still struggling with this. And um, and people have, have long since said DRM or any form of DRM is a bad idea. Yeah, it is. Uh, Just look at what my Xbox One realized. Oh gosh, exactly. Mm. And here we are still fighting it. Exactly. All these years later. Oh yeah. god. I, I still remember those uh those on those keys that you used to get for PC games. <laughs> oh gosh. Yes. Uh, oh yeah, gosh. Yeah, scroll wheels. <laughs> oh my, god, oh my gosh. They, yeah. They and... weren't good for the environment, were they? No. <laughs> and uh oh my gosh. And Sims, Sims two and three. Oh, oh god. Oh. They yeah. were bad for that. And you had, oh gosh, yeah, always on. And ah, oh, yep. hated it. Mm. Ah, okay, well, yeah. that's disappointed you. So let's lighten this whole mood. Yes, we? definitely do that. <laughs> now, I have a question to ask the audience. So I'm not expecting an answer here. Who remembers mm -hmm. Atari? I can't imagine who would ever remember that. <laughs> I know, it's crazy, right? Like, yeah. So Atari used to be a console maker long ago. Yes. And yeah, they, like they way them. before. Yeah. Yeah. They were the first, one of the first, I think, the home consoles. They weren't the first, but I think they were one of the most popular. The the twenty six, yeah. the fifty two, and the mm -hmm. seventy eight hundreds were all very popular consoles. Yes. Uh, and like yeah. I said, ET pretty much ruined that company. <laughs> Whites were shoved I... all over the place and. I have a copy. Nice. I have a copy of E.T. Atari. Really? <laughs> I do. <laughs> Did you not have a chance to go out to Nevada and go and bury it? I didn't. I didn't have to. I I got it online. Someone else did that for me. So. <laughs> nice. You should have buried do... it. Should have buried it. No, I actually have it. And then I played the uh, the ROM version, and oh, wow. I mean, it's not the wow. worst game in the world. Well, it's not, but I mean, what, I think it was like six weeks of development time yeah, well, that, and that, none that, of it makes sense. <laughs> no, but that's what I was going to say about it. It was that mm -hmm. after six weeks, like 
most oh. games are barely even playable. That one is actually playable and was released. Which <laughs> it's is is definitely. Impressive. It's impressive. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's definitely playable. Um, yeah, uh, in air quotes, playable. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, we sidetracked a slight bit. Just wanted a of little course. Atari history because Atari, uh -huh. a back baby. Uh, how? I want to know. I'm curious. This was the most unusual story I could <laughs> find, honestly. Atari set to launch a range of hotels starting in 2020 with what? Phoenix, Arizona. What? Yeah. <laughs> a hotel? A hotel. And actually the picture of the hotel, the concept art, actually has the Atari uh, free-lined logos as well across the building design. Oh, yeah, it's full weird. disclosure. I I did actually see this, and oh my gosh, it's it's weird because it is it's literally the Atari logo. Yep, it's very cool looking. But then it, you think, it is, yeah. what? <laughs> it is the strangest endeavor I've ever seen from a games company. And then to launch in Phoenix, Arizona, I. Personally, would have thought they launched in Las Vegas, but uh, that, that's, that's the in the future. Yeah, yeah so, mm -hmm. they, so some of the locations that they want to actually go into are Las Vegas, San Francisco, just to name a couple, because I can't mm -hmm. remember the full list. Not even <laughs> yeah. try. But it's all U.S. Uh, cities, moment, if I remember yeah. correctly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I, I will have to make a Las Vegas trip in the next five years because... Um, I gotta see that. Yeah, I think I'm gonna have to as well. Absolutely. Oh, God. Yeah, we were briefly talking about this when we were doing a pre-planning meeting mm -hmm. the other day. And I hope that they do, um, they deck the rooms out in that classic wood veneer that they'd use oh, on the consoles. Absolutely. Oh, we love that wood grain. <laughs> yeah, that would be great. And let's just... You know I tell you what, if they don't have a mm -hmm. twenty six hundred playable in every single room, then they've made a misstep. <laughs> oh, definitely, because what's what's the point even? Oh, it's so crazy. I know. Oh. They, be they better oh. have they better have the bad Donkey Kong as well. Oh my gosh! Oh, the terrible graphics. <laughs> <laughs> the unlicensed oh. one. Yeah, the unlicensed <laughs> one, and then the terrible the Atari um. The later one that did Pac-Man that was terrible. Oh, gosh, yeah, that was oh. that was shocking. How do you mess up Pac-Man? Uh, Atari did. <laughs> yes, yeah, Atari it. did it. <laughs> exactly. Well, they messed oh, up ET too. They did. They did. Oh yeah. my gosh. A and also, there was a game called Custer's of Revenge as well. So we won't talk I about know. that one too much. Oh my gosh, guys, listen, I'm telling you, listeners. Uh, uh, it's a bit in SFW, but if you're curious, definitely you. look up Custer's. <laughs> yeah, please do, because it is one of the most unusual games on the system. Oh my gosh. I had um, a friend 10 years ago, and uh, he had like all the, we'll say the dirty games from Atari. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I got to see them, and I was like, really? This is what passed for dirty back then? And he's like, yeah, you have to know. We didn't have that much <laughs> well, it was like these late 70s early 80s yep exactly exactly oh gosh too yeah, funny i won't talk too much about no, no we won't talk oh my gosh I, imagine yeah. if they had an 18 plus room that had that as the game in oh there. my gosh people would be laughing they'd be like what this <laughs> what the heck is this <laughs> oh my gosh oh too funny it Oh, God, I, I'm really looking forward to these <laughs> hotels, actually. And I did have a question about I know. Them. Sure. Do you think that this is off the back end of Pokemon hotels in Japan? I definitely think that there is something there. Because, I mean, the whole Pokemon, um, the whole thing that Japan's doing, the whole park, the whole everything, yep. um, it's a moneymaker. Uh, and so... That's going to entice, of course, American companies to do yeah, the same. Well. Absolutely. Which is funny that they didn't do it sooner because, mm -hmm. um, like Disney World in, wait, is it Disneyland? It's Disney no, World in Florida. I, do, I always get them mixed up. I went uh, yeah, to the one in yeah, Florida. It's, it's Disney World because <laughs> I actually, um, 
I was watching something on Sky Sports earlier that basically was like oh, okay. to do with the um, the Super Bowl. And oh I think right! One of the guys yeah. who won it from the Kansas City Chiefs who said, "Oh, what are you going to do now?" And he said, "It's going to sound cliche, but I'm going to Disney World." <laughs> yes. Um. So I've I've been to Disney World, and they have a, a, a system in place or a structure in place where each they have ho- themed hotels. Yeah. And so, but that's been around you know since the late '60s, early '70s. Oh, yeah. and it's like, They've got a similar thing here, I think, is um, uh, Disneyland Paris. They also. That's right. I one day I'm going to go to that. <laughs> um, but uh, it's always struck me as as funny that more American companies can jump on that. Yeah. And then now seeing Japan, you know, embracing Nintendo uh, World. Yeah. I can't remember what it's called. Yeah, Super Nintendo World at Universal Studios. <laughs> uh. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, seeing seeing Japan embrace that, you know, of course, the next evolution, not no pun intended, yep. um, does seem to be for American companies to make their own themed hotels. And it's interesting to see Atari do this. And I absolutely want to go to the Las Vegas uh, location. <laughs> yeah, so I just had a look on here. Uh, mm-hmm. Just to see what the locations were. So, right. We're starting out in spring of 2020 with Phoenix, Arizona. With... Which again is very strange to me. Yep. But then. That's got... the old people company, uh, old people place. People retire to there. That's probably why they're doing it because people would actually remember who Atari are. Oh! I didn't think of that! Oh my gosh! Yeah. So <laughs> the next. So the, lo- the locations after that are. Uh, Austin, Texas, so you can go home. Uh-huh. Yep. <laughs> uh, Chicago, Illinois. Interesting. Uh, what the heck is a CO? Denver? Uh, Colorado. Yep. Denver, Colorado. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Las Vegas, Nevada. Mm. San Francisco, yes. California. San Jose, Absolutely. California. And Seattle, oh, wow. Washington. See, there's a couple in there that are kind of surprising. The Colorado and the Washington ones are. Surprising. Yeah, they uh, are very surprising. Yeah, so that'll be interesting. But I'll tell you what's not surprising is Las Vegas. Of course. Um, well, but... I really, I would have thought they would have launched with that. They should have personally. had it out in the desert near Area Fifty One. Oh gosh. They should have. They should have oh. built it on top of their landfill site. <laughs> yes. Oh, that would have been perfect. Oh, they better have. They should have the done copies it. of ET in their lobby. Yep. From the landfill. Yeah. Oh, if they don't, I will be disappointed. And if they don't have a picture of the angry video game nerd at reception, <laughs> Jesus Christ, they're doing something wrong. You know what's crazy is I have to admit, he's the one that ever kind of like turned me on to that, that yeah. it was in the um, landfill. It was with me uh, as well. Yeah, but it's it's a known thing. It's been known, but I actually never heard of it until I watched uh, the angry video game nerd. So Yeah, exactly. It was one of those like urban urban legends, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Uh, and then I watched him and uh, mm. got any, and I found someone, and I paid a pretty penny for my copy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I love it. It's there. great. But yeah. You know, I mean, it would have been cool if they would have built it around that landfill site. Oh. Had the gardens basically been the landfill site, and then you could have an activity for the kids where they exactly go to, they go to, and to dig a treasure for hunt. <laughs> exactly, <get> <laughs> that would have been, been awesome. And I nearly that would have there. been great. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, yeah, I really do hope that they come overseas as well. Or oh, I do know, too. I, I don't. I mm-hmm. think right. What they should do, and this this would be a right money maker, and this would absolutely annoy the heck out of Nintendo as well. I think <laughs> because we got Super Nintendo World coming to um, Orlando. Oh yeah, they should do mm-hmm. an Atari Hotel right next door to it. Oh heck yes, that would be so <laughs> funny, wouldn't it? Oh, that would be great. Oh, that would Atari be so can good. Compete on the console market, but they can definitely compete on the on the hotel market. <laughs> oh my gosh, just on the shape. <laughs> Alone. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> what I'll do is after this this episode goes mm-hmm. live, I will post a picture of that up on the um Definitely. on our Twitter for you to check out because it is yeah, good. it's good. 
It is. It makes you have all the good feelings because yeah. it, it is the Atari logo. Oh, it's so it good. Is good. Anyway, <laughs> so that's it for the news. That's yeah. Good. Some good ones, actually. Light that was really good. It's a light news week, but I found some of probably three of the best ones. Oh, definitely. Um, it's getting to where now every week I see something and go, oh, have that um, on the podcast. And then you just have that on the podcast. <laughs> exactly. So I'm like, I don't even have to say anything anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the first couple of weeks it was like, oh, I'm going to send this over to you. And I went, oh, really yeah, got it. already got it. <laughs> yeah. Now I'm just like, ah, he's already got it. I don't need to tell him. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um. So this brings us to our next segment, and as we always say, it's a two-minute segment that is never two minutes. Um, this is our You Got This segment. Um, it's where you take a moment as you start your week uh, to just kind of think about the upcoming time and just, you know, spend some time focusing on yourself because we don't really do that very much uh, nowadays. No, not at all. Um, I know for me personally, I'm constantly thinking of, you know, other people. And uh, right now, my convention is on my mind 24-7. You know, how do I give people a good time? How do I make sure that they're going to enjoy themselves and blah, blah, blah. And then I forget about myself. <laughs> you but that kind of flows into this week's quote which is actually one of my favorite quotes, and I've uh, put it on social media for a couple of years now, yep. which is, be fearless in the pursuit of what sets your soul on fire. Um, hmm. I, I have always believed that the thing that you should do is anything that makes that fire just well up in your chest. Um you know, let's say that you're, uh, I remember when I was in university, I was working at McDonald's. Yep. McDonald's did not set my soul on fire. No, definitely not. <laughs> no. <laughs> but uh, writing science fiction did. Yeah. And so I wrote my first manuscript uh, in that time, and then I was able to sell it. Um, and then from there... I got more and more opportunities right. and that's where I, yeah. And that's where I learned that it doesn't matter. Um, it doesn't matter what you do nine to five. Yeah. We all have to work nine to five. I have to work nine to five. Um, what? You work nine yeah. to five? I know it's shocking. Yeah. I, I thought it was like nine to nine. <laughs> nine to nine fifteen. Um, <laughs> no, I meant nine fifteen in the evening. Oh, right. Yes. Oh, yeah. my gosh. Yeah. You're to be fair, no, I don't stop working. I am a bit of a workaholic. Um, but we all have to work nine to five. And sometimes whatever we're doing it during that nine to five, it's not the thing that sets our soul on fire. No, it isn't. Um, so what I want to do is encourage you, no matter what it is, um, if you want to sing, if you want to write, if you want dance if you want to create video games if you you know want to be a developer uh pursue it yeah. um it's not silly it is not silly people told me my entire life everything i want silly uh yeah and now here i sit and i'm i'm kind of doing whatever i want and getting paid for it <laughs> and, yeah. um yeah and so it's like yeah, the voices, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. Uh, you want to be an MMA fighter? Go do it. You did that. Uh, I did do that, <laughs> <laughs> which will come up later. Um, <laughs> but I mean, really, people, you know, if you're like, I'm going to say this, and it's silly, but I, it, it, it kind of shows what I mean. Um, you know, if you're a white kid growing up in, uh, I don't know, Houston, Texas, yeah. and you want to become a rapper, do it. If it's the thing that sets your soul on fire, yeah. you know, put your cowboy hat on and rap. <laughs> it's just, it's, it, it doesn't matter. Uh, don't, don't worry so much about what other people think. Um, 
that is something I very much uh, believe in, which is stop caring what people think. Um, You should only really care about what you think about the matter. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. It's you in the driving seat of your life. Mm -hmm. Yep. I mean, in the end, that's, that's what you've got. And uh, I've always kind of, I don't know. I, I don't care about convention. I do whatever I want to do. And I know that not everybody's like that. Um, but I'm here to tell you, yes, it can be scary. Mm-hmm. But the self-satisfaction that you get when you go after the thing. Oh, exactly. It's great. You know? It's an amazing feeling. You know, it is. Had it not been for me doing that, a couple of years ago, I yeah. wouldn't be sitting in this position right now. I wouldn't be sitting yes. a podcast with you or writing, yes. writing reviews, you know, maybe not for a living, but actually doing well, it for fun. You know, yeah. You know, it's something I always wanted to do, but never got around to actually posting them up online anywhere or anything like that. So when the exactly. opportunity came up, I took it because it was something I've always wanted to do. And I've always, I've been happy of doing it ever since. Even though it's, it's it, challenging, it's tough work, you know. It is. But if you want, but it's rewarding. Like, yeah, exactly. If you want to do something that's going to make you happy and set your soul on fire, like you say, mm-hmm. then you've got to put hard work into it as well. It's not going to come absolutely. Easily. No, uh, yeah, nothing, nothing good ever comes easy. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, but work. perfect example is, I mean. Okay, so you and I both decide to review games. Then you and I both disgui- decide to make a podcast. And then, by just chance, I'm hosting a convention, and you're the tournament head, you know? I've wanted to host tournaments for a long time as well. <laughs> exactly, and I wouldn't have anyone else do it. So it's like, Perfect. just, just, exactly, just pursue that thing. Who cares? Who cares what anyone else says? If they think you're silly, so what? Just just laugh along with them and go ahead whatever you want to do anyway. Exactly. It definitely <laughs> That's what I back do. to your quote. Absolutely. If it makes mm-hmm. you feel impassioned and put the fire in your belly, then who cares Oof. what anyone thinks? Absolutely. So as as you're not breaking the law. <clears throat> oh yes, please don't break the law. <laughs> <laughs> but as we say every week, you got this i absolutely believe it and And we're here if you need to talk yeah absolutely Mm -hmm. okay so a little bit more than two minutes but a good section of course (laughs) absolutely just the running joke that we always have yeah that's just how it goes (laughs) yeah we're always gonna fight about it aren't we yeah that's just yeah i'll struggle to make it two minutes and i'll never have it's, so... <laughs> it's fine because we're going to fight about a few more things on this one. Oh yeah, bring on the fighting! Yeah. So Kylie <laughs> approached me this week with a topic that I... br- brought music to my ears, and I knew it would. <laughs> so we are going to talk about <laughs> fighting games. Yeah. So more talk about. <laughs> you... Yeah, I was going to say you tell us why you brought this up. What was okay. What caused this? Ah, uh, this is an easy one. Um, so, uh, last week, um, Mortal Kombat, which we're now on Mortal Kombat 11. Um, so strange to think. I know, it really is. Uh, they released the gameplay footage of their newest guest character, the Joker. And yes, we mean the Joker from the Batman series. I mean, it's not the first time they've done it, to be fair. But no. We'll get into that a bit later. Exactly. Um, and the footage just. I was very skeptical uh, in the beginning when it was, was announced. Well. Oh. Oh, when they first released the very first graphic we're talking months ago, yeah. I was like, who is. It? That's not Joker. Yeah, what it is. It looked a bit oh. hideous, didn't it? Oh, it did. It did. It looked like, I don't know, like. A fifteen-year-old playing cosplay, which is fine, but not really for Joker. It's like they use the Jared Leto version, or something. Totally yeah, yeah. It wasn't good. It yeah. wasn't good. Um, and so I didn't have high hopes, and I was a little disappointed. Yeah, I um, was as well. Yeah, and then they released the gameplay for, and I went, 
Oh. <laughs> yeah, ex- that was exactly what I thought about it as well. Yeah, they so, made a few changes here. <laughs> yeah, they made some visual upgrades. They, they did. But they definitely mm-hmm. nailed his character dead on with this. Oh, yeah. And I have not verified this, which I'm kind of ashamed of. But it sounds like Mark Hamill. I'm not saying that it is. I should have looked that up. I feel really bad. Yeah, I'm going to go and look it up now. So you keep talking. Okay, uh, but if it is Mark, if it isn't, holy crap, they, they got the job. They have. It is definitely the right intonations, the right, uh, you know, uh, inflections. It is. It is the Joker. They did it right. Yep. Um, and I am very impressed, especially to come from what they had, you know, a year ago or two years ago, where it was just like, oh. Oh dear! Oh dear! Oh gosh! Yeah, they have oh. pretty shocking ones. Yeah, I just I, I I remember that first screenshot they released, and I was just like, "This is not no no. This yeah. is never going to work." Okay, uh, so I've got an update mm-hmm. for you. No, oh yes, it's Richard. It's Edgar, not. Who also does wow. a really yeah. wow oh my gosh okay my goodness this game has got the the who's who of of voice actors my goodness oh, you got yourself so some deep. troy baker in this game Woo-hoo! Um, <laughs> richard Eckhart, love troy baker. jennifer hale yes kelly oh Hull, yes kelly who oh. phil lamar my goodness yeah they are killing it with this voice cast nice who's phil lamar doing oh uh he kotal khan Oh my gosh! Yes, of course. Yeah, oh my makes gosh! Sense. Yeah, I think he perfect. Also did it in Mortal Kombat Ten as well. He he did he did. Oh, oh, they are killing it. They are doing really well. That's some some good voice so, actors. Yeah, and let me just say, as someone who loves uh, Joker but also enjoys the voice work, Hamill, yep. they have just nailed it. Oh my gosh! Uh, Apart from Ryan yeah, Darcy. yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we are going to leave that subject alone. We will. Um, we definitely will. <laughs> you know my thoughts on that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, so what it comes down to is, I was very excited for this, uh, and then of course knowing that uh, Pete. Love Street Fighter. No, absolutely. Yeah, I thought it would be a great subject mm. to discuss. Um, yeah, starting with, yeah, starting with the history. Um, and, wow. I mean, fighting games go back a very long time. It's surprising yes. to think that uh, the earliest, one of the earliest recorded ones was about 1985, I think, and I can't remember wow. what it was, but. It was around about 1987 that the original Street Fighter came out. That did it really? It, it did, yeah. So there's wow. a really interesting side story with that, that you guys over in America and in Japan got <laughs> got the game as Street Fighter. Over here, it's called Fighting Street. <laughs> really? For the, for the home console release, it was. <laughs> right. No idea why. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah. But, but okay, let me ask this question right quick. Go ahead. We had Super Nintendo. Did you guys have Famicom or Super Super Nintendo? Oh, okay. So yeah. Famicom is strictly Japan. Yeah, Famicom and Super okay. Famicom are exclusive to Japan. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Been trying to follow that one. But... Yeah, it's a bit of an odd one to be honest. It is. Um, it is. But yeah, I mean the early that's the earliest rem- uh, one that I remember. Um wow. obviously after that we had the absolute craziness that was Street Fighter 2 mm-hmm. in 1991. Yes. The game got literally yeah. changed and always makes me laugh that actually combos were a bug. <laughs> really? Yes, they never intended for that to ever happen, but then when the game was actually put into the hands of players, they realized oh. that they could cancel moves with special moves and that's how the combo was created. Oh, that is wild. I actually that. Mm, I it's... remember when uh Street Fighter Turbo came out, which yep. would be the the era 
that I started playing. Yeah. And I remember studying the um, the book that came with it, um, oh, yeah. the instruction booklet, and trying to memorize. <laughs> and um, just being like blown away that, you know, you could do all of this spectacular moves and yeah. stuff. Yeah, uh, it, was, it was unlike anything at I the mean, time. It was it was only when Street Fighter Two Turbo came out that actually the vast mm -hmm. majority of the public actually had any idea what Street Fighter was because it was yeah. bundled with the Super Nintendo uh, in a lot of countries uh, around the world. Uh, that makes sense. That's why I knew about it then. Yeah, I mean I, that's okay. how I first discovered it because yeah, um, I got. Uh, I think my brother actually got the Super Turbo, or not the Super Turbo, the Turbo version of the Super Nintendo. So we played right. for hours on end. And also, uh, the Mega Drive version of that game is a very funny one. Yeah, that's the one I had, the Sega. Yeah. Because <laughs> we didn't call it Mega Drive. Oh, yeah, you called it the Genesis over there. Yeah, exactly. Um, so I had the Sega Genesis version. Yep. And uh, I've spoke about this before, but... Uh, Chun Li was, of course, my my favorite. Of course. And to to put her on Turbo, unless you were Blanca, you were not gonna beat Chun Li. No, <laughs> no you should, because he also had a button, uh, a move. He did. Smashed. <laughs> yep, that's so, right. It was uh, the slap, the big old slap. Well, it was also E Honda who had that as well, because he had. The oh, that's slap. right. So, oh, he um, did. He did. Where, it's actually the very first fighting game that actually had the the piano key input. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. So if you um if you piano key the three um heavy buttons, that's how you brought it. Or mm -hmm. The three but the three punch buttons or the three kick buttons, that's how you would yeah. bring it out. Oh, too Most funny. people would just too mash funny. light. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, but then, as a, right. as a result of Street Fighter's unbelievable popularity, mm -hmm. that's where we got a lot of other fighting games come out. Um, uh, one of the most famous examples of it was actually a programmer and producer of a particular series that we mentioned recently, uh, mm -hmm. left Capcom, and went and joined SNK and took mm -hmm. a lot of the work that he done and made Fatal Fury. That's right. That's why Absolutely. We, we spoke about Terry not too long ago because of his appearance in Smash yes. Brothers. That's right. So, um, but the thing yeah. about Fatal Fury was that it was a more complex Street Fighter. So the button combinations were a little bit different to what they are on your traditional Street Fighter. So it wasn't quite, you know, quarter circle forward, quarter circle back. Sure, you can movement. So forward, yeah. down, forward, down, down, forward, you know, as you're yeah. in there. It was uh, half, uh, quarter circle, half, quarter circle forward, <sighs> half circle backs in one <sighs> and stuff like that. It was, <laughs> oh, it was complex. It was a very yeah. complicated game. I, I became a button masher when it uh, came to the more complex ones. Um, yeah, if it wasn't I'm sure back, back, circle, I, yeah, I started becoming a button masher. Yeah. I mean, you, you have kind of uh, touched on the uh, the notations for Mortal Kombat there, actually. So yes, exactly. Yeah, was, at this time, actually, where Street Fighter was going up against Mortal Kombat mm -hmm. in a big way, because in 1992 was yes. when we got the first Mortal Kombat. And the thing that made that the most important thing was the digitized graphics. Oh, so it made it when, stand out, but it, my God, it, it aged horribly. It, it's weird because you're exactly right. I uh, saw uh, Mortal Kombat, probably the first one, but definitely two and three. Um, I was like, we're in the future. We're, we're, we're in the future and it's never going to be better than this because it looked yeah. very photorealistic. Mm. Um, oh, and I remember the controversy of, oh, uh, yeah, of the fatalities and you could, uh, I don't know if they did it in other countries, but I know in America you could turn the blood physics off or yes. on. You could turn them off here, but also right. the, there was, uh, the controversy over the two different versions which oh, you may have had over there as well. Uh-huh. Where the Meg the Mega Drive or Genesis version had blood and the Super Nintendo one did not. Yes. Yes, that's exactly right. I had the 
Um, but yes, I remember hearing that the, of course, the Nintendo version would not have blood. The old family um, friendly company that Nintendo were. Exactly. And if I remember correctly, and of course, correct me if I'm wrong, it was such a big deal that it actually became political. Um, it did. You're very right. right. The, the, it was it was Mortal Kombat and a, mm -hmm. another Sega property known as Night Trap that caused oh the ESRB to be created. <laughs> oh my gosh, Night Trap is worst and terrible game. <laughs> I know. So, um, the computer game show, one of the guys on there recently just streamed that and it was utterly hilarious. Oh my gosh. Oh, it's hard oh. to think that that was ever controversial. I know, I can't believe I owned that game. I must, <laughs> I must have been one of the very few people in my area that actually owned a Mega CD. You, or sorry, the Sega CD. You had to you. be, yeah, yeah. Because, uh, yeah, I don't think I knew anyone that owned Sega CD. Um, mm. I don't think I knew anyone that did. Oh, my I God. I don't remember a single person who owned it, but I was playing Sonic CD before everyone else. Oh, yeah. No, I did have Sonic CD. Sorry, um, I make, I'm going to make a controversial point. Was sure. An overrated Sonic game. <laughs> anyway we're going on to fighting games because we yeah may, we may cover that next week yeah you never know oh yeah because we're coming up on Ooh, our oh yeah yeah we are yeah, yeah stay tuned folks yeah. um <laughs> <laughs> yeah i can't believe Looking forward to that kombat. one mortal kombat and nine trap were the reasons why oh my the, god the esrb was created and it was because of nintendo as well Nintendo yeah, and complained to the government that this game was too violent. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> so and if it. I remember correctly, <laughs> it was a uh, bipartisan, as in both Republican and Democrats were yeah. equally um, affected by this. They were. It was one of the very few times that both parties have actually been on the uh, same page. Oh, that is crazy. That is wild. I I See? remember, I remember being giddy as like my older brother and his friends would uh, do the fatalities. Yeah, and just yeah. like giggling and you know everything like that. And uh, I never thought it was bad. No, I thought it was I. cool. Yeah, me too. <laughs> that first time yeah. where, you, where you punch someone oh. down into the pit on Mortal Kombat Two and they get get skewered. That was funny. Oh, that was great. And then my absolute favorite. I think it was Sub Zero uh, ripping the spine out and then holding it up. Yep. With the skull and the spine, I'm just yeah. being like, "This is the coolest thing I've ever seen." Yeah, <laughs> I used to love that. Was, <laughs> yes. Uh, was, there was the other stage hazard was where um was where you got punched into the vat of acid. Yes, that's right, and then it, it peels away into it shows yep. your skull or yeah, your uh, skeleton. skeleton. Just yeah, going down the acid <laughs> stream. It was really yes. funny. It was dumb. So it was good. so dumb. Yeah, that was the thing. Everything was like so over the top and so dumb. Yeah. Uh, but as usual, the um, cough boomer. Cough. Um, boomers, yeah, poor boomers. And it literally was the baby boomers. I'm actually not using that yeah. as a pejorative. It, it really was, was. Really was the baby. Yeah, they got really incensed by this. And they really that's why did. You ended up having the password system on um on the yes. version as well oh yes that's right yeah. um I mean, yeah the super nintendo and the mega drive and the genesis sorry i, I keep having to try and say both because <laughs> it's like yeah. not second nature for me. Um, yeah but they had so many fighting games it was like you know mm -hmm. the 90s had a huge boom in fighting games <laughs> after street fighter 2 i mean we mentioned yeah. one off air and you <laughs> I hoped you weren't going to mention it, so I'm taking the win. Oh, out of the yeah. It was Clay Fighter. Clay Fighter. Good old Clay Fighter. <laughs> right. Who was your main? Who was your main? Uh, the Snowman. Absolutely. Oh, bad 100%. Mr. Frosty. Oh, hell yes. yeah. Yes. Absolutely. There, who, you couldn't, I mean, you can't fight with anyone else. <laughs> no, because they were all broken. <laughs> they are broken. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> How did they make free games? I don't know. Because they I went mean, on to the N64 with Clay Fighters uh, 33 yes. and a third. Or, I or six, remember. Was it 33 that, and a third, I think it was? Yeah, it, it is was 30, like, yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, it was taking the mech yeah. out of the Naked Gun game, was it? Exactly. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh yeah. my gosh. Such goodness. a different time. It but, was. um, 
I remember that uh, the first when the first Clay Fighter came out. Actually, no, I'm going to say when the second Clay Fighter came yeah. out. And thinking the graphics were stunning. <laughs> I mean, they were very good at the time. I mean... Um, it's it it's around. funny to look back now. Um, but it really was... Uh, uh, what is it called? Um, when they they use like claymation and then they take a picture of it every oh stop motion stop motion thank you it was stop motion graphics yeah it and, was. So, like uh, the whole game was yeah. made basically using stop motion and it was quite amazing, absolutely actually. yeah it was it was very amazing at the time but if you go back now and play it oh dear oh oh yeah, uh, me, me and someone played it i think about five years ago just as a laugh <laughs> Uh, mm -hmm. we plugged our arcade sticks into the PC and played it via a ROM <laughs> and oh my goodness oh, yes. even playing on, on an arcade stick was disgustingly bad oh that's too funny <laughs> oh my gosh but yeah it's shocking it really it is was. so mm -hmm. we had those two clay fighter games on the snares you had the Mortal Kombat mm -hmm. series on there one has to be mentioned it's not uh -huh. my favourite at all but it's a rare developed game, and that is Killer Instinct. Oh, I Killer Instinct loved is Killer a, Instinct. It's a, it's a classic, but Oof, I never really the first got one. Into I love that. I I did very much enjoy it, uh, just because it was at the time where I just wanted the more uh, the more violent, the better. <laughs> yeah, of course. Because I, I was being rebellious. I'm being like, oh, come on, let's let, let's let's get the more blood, and it was it was quite. Bloody, uh, but to oh, be it fair, was massively like violent that game was. It was, but it was almost more cartoony in a way, um, yeah. because it was over the top. Uh, you know the 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 ape gorilla white thing. <laughs> I can't think of what he's called now. Uh, Saber Wolf. But yes, yeah, Saber Wolf. Thank you. Um, you know, it was just so over the top. Yeah. Uh, but at the time, I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm a bad arse because <laughs> <You know? laughs> i'm playing uh and of course they had the arcade versions as well yeah i mean the arcade version yeah. was very good i played it yeah uh, we've got a low an arcade around my area where i uh, they do have a killer instinct cap oh. so i got to play it on there and it was cool as hell but, oh, um, I, would love that. I mean uh, even though i wasn't the biggest fan of it the um mm -hmm. the fogor design always attracted me oh. into that game it is epic that design yeah I oh, really it is. I, yeah. yeah. No, they did really well on the design. They did not do so well on the combos or the. Um, it's a minor thing, but the stories yeah. on yeah, the. Yeah, the story, ah. story ladder was a bit strange on that. But yeah. I do have to say that the combo system is very unique. Unique's a good way to put it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, I don't know. It's if not it held up well. I, I will say, in a, in a, in a fit of irony, not very instinctual <laughs> oh gosh <laughs> but ah. i did think i did think the combo breaking mechanic was actually quite an interesting one because at that time yeah. it was um it was unheard of that if you were caught it was. in that sort of situation mm -hmm. you're just going to get hit and that was it you couldn't do anything about it this gave yeah. you a chance to actually roll the roulette or to spin the wheel again mm -hmm. and and gamble on whether or not you wanted to break the combo it's uh, very true. That is I very thought, true. I mean, it's a very interesting system. It was still being used mm -hmm. in um, in Killer Instinct on the Xbox One, which I think mm -hmm. is a really interesting design still. Um, yeah, a lot of I people can agree. consider it to be a dialer combo sort of system, which mm -hmm. I can understand it, but yeah. I think it's what sets it apart, really, because... Who doesn't know the c -c -c combo breaker? Right? <laughs> exactly. I was, I was like... Hold <laughs> but uh, exactly um and then of course you know tekken tekken's another one yeah we would go amiss without mentioning tekken we have obviously yeah. missed off uh missed off one uh the virtual game a little sooner. yeah the virtual fighter yeah. was virtual um, fire. a classic am2 property oh yeah like that's another one that when virtual fighter dropped it yes it was a 3d fighter um oh it's horrible to look at now oof, oof, it's rough <laughs> it is, it's rough i mean even playing it is rough now oh. but when it was first on the scene 
I oh it blew I, up right away. Oh gosh, yeah, yeah, because it was one of the first three D, uh, well, three D anything, but three D fighters for yeah, sure. It was, it um, was the very first three D fighter. But I, I do actually remember that time. We're definitely in a transition period because yeah. we went from Mortal Kombat, which was photorealistic. Yeah, to, to fighters. polygons, yeah, and going, mm, there has to be a bridge somewhere, you know, we've yeah. got to, you know, there's got to be something, mm. um, because, I mean, we talked about it off air around that time, also when, uh, you know, like, uh, Mortal Kombat Sub-Zero came out. Oh, yeah, uh, Yeah, which I had been looking forward to, because at the time, Sub-Zero and Reptile were fighters. Yep. And... Um, Sub Zero came out, and I was hugely disappointed. I think a lot hugely, of dis- yeah. And uh, and then there just went that next, you know, what two or three years of just this. Just, it was bad for me, anyway. It was yeah. a bad fighting game era. It wasn't I mean, good. We'll touch on a little bit to do with that a bit later on, anyway. Mm-hmm. But um. It's the advent of the 3D consoles, let's call mm-hmm. them. So your N64, the Sega yes. Saturn, and the yes. PlayStation is where yes. we got a lot of interesting games come out of that. So you've mentioned yeah. Tekken, and Tekken was mm-hmm. the PlayStation's absolute darling for a long time. It still is, yeah. to be fair. Yeah. Um, I would go amiss without mentioning something to do with Tekken. Does, oh, absolutely, I mean, yeah. It's still going today. I mean, the guest appearances on those games alone <laughs> are crazy as well. Yeah, that's very true. So we'll we'll talk about some of the guest fighters from the, that series a bit later on. But yeah, on on the PlayStation, you had Tekken One in ninety five, mm-hmm. Tekken Two in ninety six, and yes. Tekken Three in ninety eight. <sighs> Wow. So, yeah, we had three games pretty <laughs> quickly in three years. So it was, yeah. But yeah. They always did something different as well, which was always quite nice. I mean, the, yeah. the first Tekken is quite bare bones. Like, nobody even really oh, remembers gosh. the first Tekken. No. Um, to be fair, I, I think my first Tekken was Tekken 3, uh, uh, if I'm first, honest. My first yeah. was the first one, actually, which is quite surprising. Really? Yeah. Oh, a wow. A friend of mine at the time actually owns the first Tekken. Oh, uh, wow. Yeah, that then, would do it. Yeah, Absolutely. I then owned Tekken 2 after that. I was the only one in my friend group that had a Sega. <laughs> of course <you> <laughs> Yeah, there wasn't anybody else. So. Yeah, that's because nobody wanted to buy a Sega Saturn. On no, the- everyone had a-, <laughs> a 64 or a PlayStation, yeah. and I was still on my Sega. So. Of course. <laughs> But, um, yeah. I mean, we're going to go back to Capcom briefly on this one, because this is yeah. where, where Capcom got start going a bit crazy. Yeah. Oh, my goodness, did they go crazy. So, <laughs> it was around about the time that the original Tekken came out, that mm-hmm. Street Fighter Alpha came out. Yes. Oh, my oh. goodness. This game pretty much sent a benchmark for what what fighting games were all going to be about mm-hmm. custom combos the yes the v the um the ism systems and mm-hmm. oh goodness they they essentially used this engine in quite a lot of games after that yeah and that even, absolutely even modders used this to make mugen mm-hmm. i yes. in love mugen games. oh my gosh so oh my gosh haven't heard that in so. <laughs> oh, I, I, I've played a fair few Mugen games. They're hilarious. Oh, that's too funny. Yes, yeah. listeners, if you get a chance, uh, go yeah. find you a a copy. Yeah, just <laughs> honestly, just go on YouTube and just search up Mugen Peter Griffin yeah. versus Homer Simpson. Yeah, exactly. hilarious, utterly hilarious. <laughs> Absolutely. Mm, oh god. Good, but. I mean, Street Fighter Alpha like, is just one of those games that I never got into at the time, but I've gone back and played it, and oh uh-huh. my goodness, there's so much to it, so much depth to it. It's there ridiculous. is. ridiculous. Oh, you know, yeah. It introduced a lot of the staple mechanics that are there today, mm-hmm. like um, air blocking. Yeah. Um, um, alpha counters and stuff mm-hmm. along those lines. Uh, I mean... I hate I hate the fact that I've kind of missed out the fact that Super uh su- yeah Super Street Fighter Two uh, mm-hmm. included <laughs> the very first Super Move. Yeah, which so, one? 
uh, well, it was every character had a super move. Uh, it was mm-hmm. the unique thing that was for um, Street Fo- Super Street Fighter Two. Right. But right. then obviously uh, Alpha then went and dialed up again. <laughs> Yeah, so that, I, oh. I think everyone got at least three hyper combos in that game. Oh, wow. Yeah, which is crazy. It's mental. That but is then, funny. this is why I loved Capcom back in the day. Oh. Because it was, a, it was a 94, 95 era that we got X Men Children of the Atom. Yes. Um, X Men versus Street Fighter. Yes. Marvel absolutely. versus Capcom. Yep. Oh my days! Oh my days! Oh. oh, Marvel superheroes as well. Yes. Oh, they were good times. Like I said, uh, they used the Alpha Engine pretty much for every single one of those games. I will never forget uh, walking in. Well, to a bit, a few um, Pizza Hut and Walmart would have uh, game cabinets yep. uh, in their lobbies, and it was always Marvel versus Capcom, and just always. the just the amount of characters you could choose i was like i was in the freaking heaven i was just like oh my gosh this is so cool i could barely reach it but i was still like this is the coolest thing that ever happened ever yep <laughs> i still remember how I'm oh. that, that uh roster for all this capcom was yes oh absolutely yes brilliant. absolutely and the way it was like um you know, almost like on a globe type thing. Yeah. Uh, oh, God. It was like so futuristic. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, I... I, that um, character select theme is forever mm-hmm. ingrained in my memory banks because it is absolutely so good. So good. Oh, that's some good, happy memories. <laughs> oh, so much fun. The first time yes. I ever played that, I played that against someone who. Uh, who knew the game pretty well, and I got an, <laughs> I got my absolute butt handed to me enough times. Did you play it in cabinet form or in... I may, first? I may have played it via an emulator. Oh, right, yeah, right, I right. It via a MAME emulator. See, I, uh, I got quote-unquote lucky and that my uh, older brother would... We didn't live that far from Walmart yeah. or Pizza Hut. Lucky and... Yeah, and so he'd walk down to Walmart, and I would follow him along, of and uh, his annoying little sister, <laughs> and uh, he'd go in to the store and find whatever girl he was talking to at the time. I don't know, and he'd leave me in the lobby, and I would just yeah. play. Yeah. Oh, I'd right. just play everything. Oh, I mean, yeah, that, that was the yeah. disappointing thing for me was that because I lived in a small town, uh, we yeah. didn't have that many places that actually had arcade cabinets. I mean. The local, oh. the local leisure center had, had mm-hmm. those. Um, we had a couple of cabinets in there. One of them was Street Fighter 2, of course. The other one that I remember very, very vividly, although not a fighting game, was Die Hard Arcade. Oh, yes. Uh, well, now, see, this is interesting. Uh, this is another difference between uh, UK and uh, first of all, listeners, when you hear someone from the UK say leisure center, they're talking about what we would call a YMCA. Yeah, sports complex. Uh, yeah, it's very, very similar uh, and that type of thing. And yeah. then um, we, I don't know what it was, but we had arcade games were just everywhere. We had arcades, whereas yeah. arcade here seems to mean something different. Like, um, we have something here called the Queen's Arcade. Oh, the first time... Old, um, like, you would you basically describe them as, like, seaside town places. Like, like yeah! Like, coin drops and gambling machines, basically. I got... Yeah, I got all excited. I was like, they've got an arcade here? And then... Oh. I mean, it's just, like, stores and stuff. <laughs> and I'm like, what? So yeah. we had these, these places called Tilt uh just arcade uh chuck e cheese oh my gosh so we had like all of these stores that were dedicated yeah. to arcade you know cabinets mm-hmm. so we got like die hard or the one where you had to like put out fires you, you were like uh holding a water hose and you're putting out fires oh, and what is that i cannot think right I now either. i know what i know i can pick yes. it in my head exactly and then SWAT, I think, was another yeah. one where you, yeah, and oh god, they were so fun. And then you'd have the ones where you were like in a, a racing, like you'd get in 
oh, inside yeah, yeah, of yeah. a yeah yeah and but that's not very big over here or from no, what i've heard I mean, it wasn't massive i mean yeah that's certain, what i mean yeah. there were certain places like your um your fish and chip shops that had the old <laughs> right. arcade machine in them which was mostly street fighter if i'm honest right um, yeah if you went yeah. up to like went up to london or bigger cities you had mm -hmm. i mean in the west end of london in leicester square there was a sega world up there which was a huge oh my gosh arcade I, I mean, bet it, it was because it doesn't exist anymore, unfortunately. The um, after Wait. it changed hands from Sega World, it became the Trocadero, and then that then shut down, which was very unfortunate. Is Sega World now? Correct me if I'm wrong. Is Sega World what appears in Shinmu? I believe so, because they had a Sega World in Japan. Yeah, and I I just remember very vaguely. That in Shinmu you could go in and play. You could actually play old Sega games yeah. inside an arcade. Yeah, you could. That was quite amazing, to be fair. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Oh my god. Um, yeah. Well, so, see that 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 is we did. We had lots of those in the US. Yeah, lucky um, you. Yeah, I did kind of enjoy but, that. <laughs> so, I mean, uh, we're getting into the back end of the nineties here, where mm -hmm. we're talking about a lot of the arcade games you know um yeah we could talk obviously about you know how tekken went went strong and is mm -hmm. still on seven uh, they're on their seventh game at the moment wow um oh, yeah i mean street fighter is on street fighter 5, oh gosh i mean still gets arcade releases if i'm honest you know absolutely I mean, yeah even, even though street fighter 5 got released on the consoles first they did mm -hmm. have an actual arcade version that came out in japanese arcades Wow, which is crazy oh. to think. Uh, yeah, even, even has an online infrastructure, and in it, which is even more strange. That is crazy. Yeah, it's like um, oh. I think what it is, you get like cut in Japanese arcades, you get uh, player cards, so you can oh, save right. your data on them, so you can transfer them oh. between arcade to arcade, which is pretty cool to be honest. I really want to do that one day and go to Japan. Yeah, me too. Tokyo and just yeah. Yeah, but then, oh. you know, Virtual Fighter hasn't exactly been going strong the last few years. I mean, right. the last one I played was Virtual Fighter 5 Final Showdown, which was on the Xbox 360 and the PS3. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, if you think about it, uh, Virtual Fighter came out during a time when, quote, virtual reality was huge. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, and I think now, I mean, we are now with the Oculus, um, and the Oculus Quest, and the yeah. Oculus Rift, and, and even PSVR, we're kind of touching again on the virtual reality, yeah, exactly. but for a good decade, decade and a half, yeah. uh, VR just kind of faded from from discussion, from public yeah. discussion. Yeah, because that's so I think a whole that, big series, the Virtua series, yeah. because you had Virtua Tennis, Virtua Fighting. Oh, yeah. You know. Ex yeah, yeah. There was there was even more. Um, I think there was even racing. Uh, I think so. Yeah, I, I'm 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 quite sure there was actually. But, but um, then again, AM2 just made Daytona USA, which is like the pinnacle oh, of the arcade races. Anyway, I love that, Daytona that USA. <laughs> <laughs> I love. Sam <laughs> oh my gosh! There was a time I went through where I really loved games, but I was terrible at them. Yeah. <laughs> So I'm not going to carry on with this this history because I believe mm -hmm. I might have overdone the history a little bit. Oh, you, know? you can't overdo history. No, <laughs> but I mean, yeah, let's just talk briefly about, you know, a few games that have come out and in the mm -hmm. 2000s, you know, because in the 2000s is where we've had the rise of the anime yeah. fighter, such as uh, yes. uh, Blast Blue, um, Guilty mm -hmm. Gear, um, yes. uh, Dragon Ball Fighter Z. Oh gosh, yes, um, yes. Uh, Grand Blue fight, uh, Grand Blue versus fighting, mm -hmm. and st stuff along those lines. You know, you got Blast Blue Cross Tag yeah. Battle now, and um, uh. it was also at that time where, um, I mean, back in the early two thousands, where you had Samurai Showdown come out. From, oh um, yeah, from SNK and mm -hmm. um, SNK actually despite being a huge competitor at the time with Capcom, crossed over with, with probably what is the most iconic of the series. Capcom versus SNK2, Mark of the Millennium, Ugh. 2001. Yes. What Ugh. a game. That what is game. wild. That is wild. 
Yeah, and then everyone I... forgets that uh, S and K made their own version, and it was a bloody terrible mess. <laughs> uh, <laughs> SBC chaos. Oh god, yeah. Well, that's the thing. Like S and K, like they had some really good hits. Yeah. Uh, when they hit, but when they missed, they oh, missed. They, yeah, they hard. Did. I, mean, <laughs> I mean, one of the games that you can go and pick up on the Switch now, um, mm-hmm. with the S and K back catalog, along with Samurai Showdown, Fatal Fury, King mm-hmm. of Fighters, is Garo Mark of the Wolves, which is a oh, very yeah. good game. Yes, and yes, yes, yes. You should definitely check that one out because actually, one of Terry's costumes in Smash Brothers is inspired <laughs> by Garo Mark of the Wolves. Um, but we've got some very interesting games uh, that had a lot of representation from other media, which so we're going to talk yes. about guest fighters. So, yes. Mortal Kombat is quite synonymous with having this, as is Tekken. Yeah. So. In terms of the guest fighters from um, from Mortal Kombat history, we would go amiss without mentioning the very first one, which was their game with DC. Oh, gosh, yes. Mortal Kombat versus DC Universe on the Xbox right. 360 and PlayStation 3. Yes. Which, when it happened, I thought it was terribly executed at the time. I, I thought it was fun. I, I'm a lot of, of people, people did. I'm one of those yeah. people that saw it. It was a disgusting mess and just went yeah. with it and had fun. <laughs> that it did see, have some funny stuff in there. It was during the time that I was like, um, I guess full of teenage angst. I don't know, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think I like, was too. Yeah, I was just like, oh. This is terrible. It is just they're just market. They're just buying into all the marketing. I, I I won't have anything to do with it. And then uh, of course I regretted it afterwards. But at the time I was yeah. very staunchly against against it. Yeah, of course. But it did have some really good stuff about it. I mean, Joker was designed yeah. incredibly well. Oh yeah, like, yeah. He was one of back, the very few characters that actually had a really good moveset. set. He was yes, designed absolutely. perfectly. Mm-hmm. No, absolutely, absolutely. Mm. I loved his uh, fatalities as well. They were brilliant. The one uh, where, he, where he pulls out the fake gun. Yes. He starts laughing and then he just shoots them. Yes, which <laughs> they've uh, recreated, shall oh, I did say. Oh, did they? They did. Oh, they did. yes. They did. I'm so yeah. glad about that. Yeah. Um, so you're not lacking there. Good. <laughs> In the, the newest wor- ones. Oh, but the worst part about it was Batman and Superman. Oh. Their heroic brutalities. I, I think that's what did it for me. Yeah. Where I was like, I don't like this. <laughs> no. The Flash was absolutely cheap in that game as well. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, gosh. I, re- I remember. Oh. I just remember that whole time period. And it was a huge marketing deal. Yeah, uh, it was. They pushed so hard for that. Yeah, but this is the thing that I was telling you off air a couple of days ago, mm-hmm. was that actually at the time, Midway were in a lot of trouble. Like they yes. were going out, of, they were essentially going to be going out of business. So this yeah. was basically um, Ed Boon's way of pitching to um, to DC and to Warner Brothers to for them to come and buy the Mortal Kombat division, basically. Yeah, and therefore Mortal Kombat went over to uh, WB Games and they set up their new studio such called Never Realm Studios. Yes. And this was the yes. game that caused them to do it. Um, here's a funny, interesting story Go ahead. that I will probably expound on in the future. Okay. I, I have a friend in the industry. Yeah. Uh, he's, he's been in the industry for a few decades. Okay. Decades okay. older than me. Um... He used to be in acquisitions uh, of new games. Yeah. And I think he said, uh, I might be putting the date wrong, but uh, I think it was 1989. He said a young man walked into his office. Yeah. Very nervous. Um, Did not give a good presentation. I think I know who you're talking about, but go on. (laughs) And uh, he had idea for a fighting game and it was 
realistic and yep. I won't say the company that the my friend worked for no, no time. please don't because it's not I won't I wouldn't it do might that. get me in trouble yep. but uh he did in fact turn the young man down and he it, turned him what, down can I ask a quick mm-hmm. question about this Sure, Does, sure, is, sure. This, is this particular person not your friends the person uh-huh. the young pitcher himself uh-huh what does he go by a handle on twitter called noob d i i actually don't know uh <laughs> i should probably look that up no that is actually, uh, that's actually a um a, an interesting story in its own right ah interesting um so he he dismissed this young fellow of course. from his office, and then this same young fellow went and sold his game, yep. which is now known as Mortal Kombat. Yep. Uh, and that's my, exactly who I thought it was. Yeah, and my friend to this day, we're talking, what are we, 30 years? Nearly 20? 30 years, yeah. Yeah. Regrets it. Oh, no, it's thirty years. Yeah, plus thirty plus years. Now. Thirty years. He remembers it in exquisite detail and regrets it to this day. He yep. turned the young man down because of his nervousness and inability to <laughs> present his game. Of course. Now. <laughs> so, so yeah. This is what I was gonna say. The reason mm-hmm. why this is an interesting thing. The guy himself uh-huh. is the creator right? of Mortal Kombat. Yes, and by that is right. on Twitter he is called Noob D because ah. on t- that is actually Ed Boon spelt backwards. Oh, really? Yeah, I should have clocked to that. I <laughs> oh my god! You also know that actually mm-hmm. the reason why there is a character called Noob Cybot. Yes, they, I yeah, do know that named one. Named after the two creators of Mortal Kombat. Yes. I actually do know that one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh, the first night that my friend told me, that, well, he didn't tell just me that story. We were telling a, an entire audience. And then yeah. after he and I went for drinks. Yep. And I was just like, I I can't believe you. He's like, yeah. Did you have yes. a Mel Drew moment? I don't believe it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> he was just like, he was like, yeah, to this day, that is my biggest regret. Sometimes you make the wrong decision. Now, he made some other really good decisions. Um, yeah, that probably made so, that company a lot of money. Yeah, I won't go into, but uh, they might be my favorite game series. But um, <laughs> That's a bit of a giveaway, so, I think. But I'm going to ask you off air just to confirm that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because okay. I don't want to. All right. But um, not that anyone listens to this, but just in case. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> but uh yeah so uh that that was an interesting lesson in when you go to present your games you know be but, confident but then then again he did manage to sell it to the right people so <laughs> yeah well they did they sold it to midway obviously yeah, yeah they midway, they did all right midway did a really well out of that series until they, they did. made some really horrific decisions yeah a hundred percent agree yeah. absolutely but then, yeah. So we've got, obviously, we've got things like Marvel vs. Capcom that had, <laughs> you know, game, oh, yes. gaming's biggest crossovers and all that sort yeah. of thing. You know, uh, that was incorporating Marvel characters into into uh-huh. the sphere. You know, you had Mortal Kombat versus DC Universe, like we spoke about. Right. Um, we then move on to things like Mortal Kombat Nine, where yeah, you had some crazy characters come into that one. And I'm trying yeah. to remember some of the guest characters that came on that because that was mad. Uh, let me that go. was a very, very like that's the moment I decided maybe I'm not into Mortal Kombat as much as I thought. <laughs> oh, blimey! I forgot about some of these. <laughs> it was oh, wow. It was crazy. It was yeah. definitely crazy. Uh, yeah. And to be fair, uh, which we will talk about in more detail and appear in a bit, yep. the uh, outfits for the characters got kind of crazy there they for a little while. Mm. Yeah. So I'll go over these nine characters that have been in Mortal Kombat uh, 
as guest characters over mm-hmm. uh, since nine over nine, ten, and eleven. These mm-hmm. are mental. So you have Joker. We've mentioned him. You right. Have a xenomorph from Alien. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Fre- Freddy Krueger. Yep, that's Never right. Face. Yeah. The Predator. Yep. Spawn. <sighs> Yeah, the T eight hundred and Jason <laughs> Voorhees, but there is one other that was only PlayStation exclusive, which was Kratos from God of War. <gasps> oh yes! Now I never played the PlayStation version. I didn't either. But I did hear of that, um, which is just. That's just crazy. Yeah. That was absolutely mind blowing. I know, but he was broken apparently. No, I wouldn't he was be banned surprised. Banned on the tournament scene, I think. Ah, right. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I That's think because they played the like, exclusive on 360 at the time because it was the better version. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Um, so yeah. that was the main one. Yeah, that yeah. I knew anything about I at mean, the time. Let's just say this one thing: as, as well respected as fighting games have been over the years, there's been mm-hmm. a lot of controversy about them as well, hasn't there? Yes, yes. I mean, from day one. Yeah, I mean, we Absolutely. mentioned obviously the, the the forming of the ERSRB because of Mortal Kombat yes. and Night Trap, but that's mm-hmm. not to. Um, I'm going to go into one of gaming's biggest crossovers here, and this is the mm-hmm. most unexpected of ones: Street Fighter Cross Tekken. Yeah, that's a uh, that's a weird one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's very was, different styles. Yeah. They're two very different styles, so one 2D, one 3D, uh, mm-hmm. morphed onto a 2D plane because Capcom made this version. Yeah. With Tech and Cross Street Fighter still apparently supposed to be coming out. Uh, it's been eight, <laughs> it's been eight years. Just oh, gosh. It now. Uh, yeah, the, people seem to forget that Street Fighter Cross Tekken came out in 2012. Wow. Yeah, it's been a long time. Wow. So, Golly. So this was a very unique interesting game let's say it played like street fire but it had a lot of stuff that incorporated tekken mechanics as well such as wall bounces right. ground bounces um, oh yeah otgs so uh to anyone who's not in the know that's an off the ground so you yeah know, keep your combo combo going even though they've hit the ground with a hard knockdown crazy stuff oh, wow. i really liked the game i still have it on pc and i still do play it it's fun oh wow i really like that's- it but that's very cool. This game had a lot of controversy by locking 12 DLC characters on its disc. <sighs> that, yes. Yes. Including Kai and Cody from Final Fight. <laughs> yeah. I'm not bitter about it at all. Oh, that, that, that was a crazy time for anyone who was not around at that time or yeah. wasn't aware. Uh, yeah, DLC at the time was it wasn't really downloadable so much as it already disc yeah it was already there and it was just it was already there locking it via code yeah which is just it was it was kind of humiliating in a way yeah uh, it, it was it, terrible i hate it i hated it i hate mm-hmm. it. and that and that was across all the games at the time um that was across the board and it just there was no justification, and a lot of games uh, threw a lot of you know hissy fits, I guess, yep. <laughs> um, about it because that's dumb. Why sell a disc with everything on it that I've paid for? I've paid you know full price for, and really lock off. For yeah, exactly. It was never cheap. No. Especially back then. No, it was, uh, 50, it was 50 pounds or 60 dollars oh. for the base game. Yes. And then it That's was, right. I think That's it right. Was about, it was about 20 pounds for those characters. Yeah. Yeah. And it would be about $20 $12. for those characters. So, yeah. yeah. It was crazy. And all you're doing is paying for. Um, Just oh, yeah, those were... like a couple of kilobytes of code. Yeah. That was the early days of oh, DLC, yeah, and it was terrible. Mm. terrible time terrible yeah. time I mean, i'm not against dlc i'm against uh Bad exploiting DLC. it yeah yeah, yeah. exactly mean, to be fair this is just 
I mean, Capcom are pretty much there when it comes to controversy with fighting games. They've <laughs> always been around, yeah. you know. We won't Absolutely. Go, I'll mention the seven versions of Street Fighter 2, the three versions of Street oh, Fighter 3, God. the Gosh. four versions of Street Fighter 4, the three versions yeah. of Street Fighter 5 now, uh, yeah. multiple Alpha games, including a repackaged Alpha Alpha 2 Gold, Street yes. Fighter EX, EX Plus, yes. EX Plus Alpha. That's right. Jesus. Capcom yeah. have released a lot of Street Fighter games and not all of them have been hits. No. And uh, a lot of them, including Capcom Fighting Jam, or Capcom oh, Fighting God. Evolution, sorry, oh, wow. have been a disaster. Yes. Um, it I really agree. fundamentally ruined their fighting game division. Now, I want to bring up something that not a lot of people know about, which is the mm -hmm. fighting game Dark Ages. Hmm. Huh. So, it sounds vaguely familiar, but I'm not... Yeah, because it's a lie, that's why. Oh! <laughs> so, the fighting game Dark Ages was a time that apparently happened between 2002 and 2008, where... Wow, that's a big stretch of time! Yeah, essentially after Marvel vs. Capcom 2 was an absolute uncertified hit, yeah. Capcom yeah. stopped making fighting games, or at least stopped making good ones. Right. Um, but it was... The, the reason why I bring it up is because a lot of people seem to think that nobody was making fighting games in that time, which is not true. Because you got more right. Tekken games, you got a lot of Tekken games on the PlayStation 2, including Tekken 4, Tekken 5, Tekken Tag. Yeah, um, I remember Tekken 4, for sure. Yeah, you get all, you've got all of those, you've got, um, uh, you've got a few Samurai, Samurai Showdown games, mm -hmm. a couple of SNK um, King of Fighters games, like uh, King of Fighters 2002. Um, yeah. And then this is where, obviously, we mentioned them. Guilty Gear was massive. I was gonna say, yes, I was going to say that would have first. Um, I, I kind of spoke about it off air, but it was yeah. at a, a, a party one night and I'd never seen anything like it. And it was mm. crazy. Yeah, Absolutely so, wild. So the reason why I wanted to bring it up was mainly because if anyone ever mentions the dark the fighting game mm -hmm. Dark Ages. Tell them it's a lie. Yeah. Because just Cause, because yeah, Capcom I've... weren't creating games doesn't mean anyone wasn't creating fighting games at that time. There were absolutely. loads available. Loads. Mm -hmm. um, no, absolutely. Uh, but we've obviously guest characters was quite a huge thing, you know. Yeah. Even to the point where um, um, I know it's a rareware property, but they didn't actually make the new Killer Instinct on Xbox One. But <laughs> um, we had uh, the Battle Toads actually come into the into that game. Did they really? Yeah, they did. I love Battle Toads. So do I. But it's that's a so fun. I know people say it's hard, but yeah. I like... what was it as well? They also had Arbiter in that game as well. Oh, really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, I, I'm pretty <laughs> sure that Arbiter came over to um, Killer Instinct 20, oh. 2013. Oh, wow. I'm going to have to look it out, I don't know. Yeah. But, um, yeah, along with uh, that, you know, I mean, there's always also um, the female characters. Yeah, there's been a lot uh, of female characters over the years. Which, okay. On one hand, I love. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, of course, being a kid. I mean, Chun Li. Often, Chun Li and uh, the uh, the guy with the Wolverine claws <laughs> and Street Fighter. Oh, Vega. Hmm? Yes, Vega. Thank you. Um, I would go between uh, uh, Chun Li and Vega. Yeah. Uh, and because I mean, you know, Vega's. Quite flamboyant, we'll say. Um, and, um, yep. But then, what I loved about uh, combat was, you know, they had uh, Tana and uh, uh, Melina, and yeah, you know, Jade. Uh, Jade. Yeah. Which okay, yes, the character with color bikinis yeah. on, but um, but I enjoyed uh, having a female fighter to be able to do that. Now, as I got older and went into fighting myself yeah. um i i did start to see some strategic things yeah. um 
interesting side story. When I started my MMA, which would be oh, six years ago now. Oh my gosh. Oh, it does not feel like I've been out of it that long. But yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, my trainer would always play the Mortal Kombat uh, <laughs> soundtrack. So that was always fun. Of course. Um, yeah. But uh, I remember. When they first started talking about uh, Mortal Kombat 11, well, it started with Mortal Kombat X, but yeah. it, it's really come to full front with uh, 11, mm. which is, oh, they've made the girls, I don't know what they say, something like they appeased the feminist and, you know, they made them have short hair and more clothes, more clothes and all this stuff. Guys, I'm going to tell you, <laughs> I have been in the octagon. You want short hair. Uh, in fact, most most females, I cut my hair very, very short when I'm fighting. Um, it comes just below my ears. Uh, oh, you would not. Voice, isn't it? Oh, gosh, yeah. I mean, not only does it, when you're sweating, because you sweat like crazy. So not only does it get stuck in front of your face, which is bad. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, it, you also don't want anything that can be you know, grabbed onto. Um so I would always cut my hair very, very short. A lot of the other girls cut their hair short would braid their hair. Yeah. So that it was very close to the scalp. So when they started coming out saying, oh, they cut the girl's hair short, blah, blah, blah. I was like, dude, come on. You, that, that's more realistic. I'm sorry. It is. And then, um, yes, I will try to say this as, as safe for work as I can. Mm -hmm. Um, some of us are endowed yeah. young women uh that can work against you uh very much in uh the octagon because that is a sensitive area it um hard. it gets very much in the way so you either bound them up with uh just tape yep or you get a there's a type of um uh, I can't even think right now, but uh, it, it's a chess piece that you can wear, uh, okay. yeah, to protect you. Um, kind of like an Under Armour type thing. Yeah. But uh, I never, I never did that. But I did bound um, because, guys, I'm telling you, I mean, I've got massive arms and I am strong as a freaking ox. Those things get in the way. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I get, I get. and uh yeah they do they do um and it kind of affects your reach as well i have a very long reach uh because of very long arms yeah um so i need all of that out of the way <laughs> yeah, so i mean i'm for one i i've never really hidden the fact that i love i love beautiful quote sexy women in games i am not against that by any means but I'm very practical and kind of realistic. Of course, um, yeah. Yeah. And so the kind of latest controversy with the, the girls being fully dressed now and stuff, for me as a fighter, that's more realistic. Yeah, um, I get that. Yeah, the idea of fighting in a bikini, I that would be bad. It's um, very WWE. It is. I mean, one of my very, very first bouts, uh, now I ha I've said, I think I've before, um, when I fought, I had to do a lot of exhibition fights, mm -hmm. which means no points. But that's because I'm a very large uh, female, as in I'm six foot tall, um, and I'm very, very solid, very muscular. Yep. So I had to fight against men. Well, in the state of Texas, they don't let you count that on your card. Yeah, that's an exhibition. Card. Yeah, it can only be counted as an exhibition. So one of my very first fights was against um, who's a very accomplished fighter. Mm -hmm. And his very powerful move was to kick me right in the abdomen. Um, yeah. No worries there. I knew how to block against him. Yeah, of course. Yeah. But I try to picture myself in a bikini. Yeah, no. Kick? No, no. <laughs> no. No. That would be bad. <laughs> That would, would be, be so bad. Oh my gosh. And then the brute. Ah, oh, no, 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 no. Yeah. No, course. no fighter in their right mind would be that much exposed flesh. They just wouldn't, guys. I'm not. 
kidding. No, they wouldn't. So if you ever see like um, Cammy's model from Street Fighter <laughs> 4, 4 or 5, where she's basically yes. got her butt hanging out. Yes. The time, that's not realistic. And it no. would happen because she'd be trying no. to pull that thing straight out of her butt. Oh my all gosh, all yes. The time. It would be a distraction. It would be a huge distraction. Yeah. Uh, so it looks good in the game. Well, it does. Lie, I but... mean, I'm I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. Well, even going back to to uh, more combat, like Katana looks freaking gorgeous for yeah. a couple of those. Um, and you know her her outfit just gets smaller and smaller with each iteration. And I do. I think she's a gorgeous character. Yeah. Is it realistic? No. No, no. but it, it, it's starting to sell copies. <laughs> yeah. Let's just be honest. Yeah. Um, it's just funny to hear the uh, Taku crowd, uh, yeah. <laughs> which I love. Don't get me wrong; I, uh, <laughs> I'm kind of I'm kind of part of that crowd. Uh, but to go over about just appeasing the feminists, I I don't think they are. Uh, I think they're just trying to be a little bit more realistic. Yeah, I think fighting. so. A little bit more. I mean, you can't be completely realistic. It is yep. a fantasy fighting game, but yeah, um, that's pretty much what they are they are kind of fantasy yeah because they're not realistic in any way shape or form. not really like, i mean you can't rip someone's spine out not, <laughs> not even just that you can't you can't like in terms of street fighter you can't sit on the ground do a crouch, <laughs> crouching medium kick and then throw a fireball like, right. that's nearly that's impossible oh. that's not gonna happen I wish I could throw a fireball. Yeah, that would get the people amount... off of me real quick. Yeah, the, amount, <laughs> the amount of times I've wanted to low forward fireball, fireball cancel. The amount of times <laughs> I've wanted to do that. So coming, uh, coming back to it. So yeah. the guest characters for Killer Instinct 2013 on the Xbox One. Yeah. These are mental, by the way. Um, Rash from um, <laughs> Battletoads. But he incorporated all the Battletoads into his moveset. That is so crazy. I actually did not know that. Yep. Arbiter. Yes, <laughs> which is yeah, and this blowing is probably, my mind. This is the one that blew my mind when I remembered it, because I've just mm -hmm. seen it. General Ram from Gears of War. Oh my gosh! <laughs> wow! That's but crazy. you're right! That's crazy. Oh my gosh, that is so wild. Yeah, he what was a, a DLC time. character in Season 3. Oh my goodness. <laughs> That's insane. <laughs> I, I think, shall we leave this here with this one? But mm -hmm. we'll mention one last thing to do with fighting games. Sure. The popularity of them outside of gaming. Okay. How many of them have had movies? <sighs> well, uh, yeah. You know what? You're right. First uh, of all. Yep. Street have... Fighter. Yep. Uh, and... Mortal Kombat 1 and 2. Or yes. Mortal Kombat and Mortal Kombat Annihilation. Uh, yeah. Dead or Alive, which we haven't mentioned. Yes. Which is the, uh, the, overly, yeah, we... the overly sexy one. Which I do actually very much enjoy. Yeah, I like DOA. DOA 4 had, like, was a yeah. really good game. And it had um, Spartan, uh, a Spartan mm -hmm. as a guest character. That's right. That game, which yes. was awesome. Um, oh, wait. Uh, it's the only game that I've ever had uh, an E-grade online. It's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, so, I remember the trailer for it when it dropped. Yeah, so did I. Yeah, I was very excited. Um, that... Didn't didn't turn out to be quite as good. I really liked the A four though. It was good, but it, yeah, I thought it would be a little better. I mean, but I, uh... I mean, sorry, I've got to go back to guest characters because I've missed one. Sure, the, the most iconic one of all time. Sure. Link in Soul Calibur 2. Oh, yes! Soul Calibur. I did forget that. Yeah. You're right. Link in Soul uh -oh. Calibur 2. You had Heihachi in the PlayStation version and Spawn in the yes. Xbox version. Yeah. So Spawn and has I believe... actually been a DLC, has been a guest character in two separate games. That's crazy. And I think, remember, correct me if I'm wrong, listeners, but I do that franchise. Yeah. In fact, I'm quite sure that is okay. actually what's happening all right yeah so but, back, so in movies the yep yeah, street fire yeah more combat and i um uh, one and annihilation doa um mm -hmm. king of fighters there was one a... there's a tekken yes movie. 
Yep. Um, uh, Street Fighter had a second movie as well. Uh, yeah, Chun Li. Yeah. Of Chun Li. I, I yeah. decided to leave that one out intentionally. <laughs> it's really bad. Uh, but, <laughs> yeah, it is. But um, that's not mentioning the animated movies that we've had. Yeah, looking, that's right. I'm looking at one right now: Street Fighter Assassin's Fist. Which I is... do kind of like the animated ones, but I just like oh, animation. Oh, no, that's not an animated one. Sorry, Assassin's Fist. That's live action. Is it really? Yeah, it's actually brilliant I as well. I don't remember that one. Uh, it After... was originally actually a series on YouTube on Machinima, but they actually... Re oh, wow. Um, wow. When I come over in, uh, in August. August, I will bring it over yeah. for you so you can watch it. Definitely. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah, so they've had that, but they've oh, also had mission. the iconic uh, Street Fighter 2 manga. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, that they, one. Yes, I know they, that one. They also had Street Fighter Alpha movie as well. They've had um, Tekken Blood Vengeance, which is oh, actually wow. quite a good one, to be fair, as well. I have to say, out of out of all of them, and I and I do love more, mm. uh, as cheesy as it is. Of course. Uh but believe it or not, Street Fighter has the best line out of all of them. Which, and that's which when... Which movie are we talking about, though? We're talking about the original Street Fighter okay. with Raul, Raul Julia yes. as uh, M. Bison, uh, where he talks about how... Oh, uh, I know exactly what you're talking about here. The well. day he destroyed the village. Yep. For me, he's like, you... it was cheese day. Yes. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's like chilling he's it was like beautiful Did for you, you the right. rest of your the, your life ended that day but for me it was just a tuesday yeah, ah! it's so good so <laughs> good so like, good it's so strange to think that Raul julia was so oh, ill making that movie he was he, he was not long after it was not long after well. he was in a wheelchair uh at the time and yeah would get up and film his his uh yeah, scenes they had to actually he was an actually, amazing actor yeah mm. they had to like um they had to add things to the costume to make him bulk out a little bit more as well because oh so oh dear dear yeah, it dear it was horrible yeah. to see but um fabulous I, actor. I, oh what was it so i thought you were going to mention the classic zangief line from that movie oh which one uh, it's the bit where the um where the truck's getting crashed through a door <laughs> And they're yes. watching the CCTV camera footage, and he goes, "Quick, change oh. the channel." Yes. <laughs> oh gosh, that one's good too. Ah, oh, it's so cheesy good. That's oh, the thing. Yeah. When you're watching either the first Mortal Kombat Street Fighter movie, you have to bear in mind they are cheesy on purpose. Yeah, the first uh, Mortal Kombat is actually a good movie. To be fair, I though. I like it. I mean, obviously, the whole Mortal Kombat franchise is copying Alpha the Last Dragon. Yeah, but, of course. Yeah, it, but it's the cheesy version. But also yeah. watch The Last Dragon. Too right. <laughs> um, now, for a bit of factage here to do with the movies mm -hmm. and to do with uh, a particular game, do okay. you know that Mortal mm -hmm. Kombat originally was uh, pitched as a Jean-Claude Van Damme fighting game. Oh my gosh. Uh, I actually didn't know that. Yeah, it was pitched as a Jean-Claude like Van I Damme should. fighting game, but uh, he did not want anything to do with it. Oh, he, wow. Yeah, he was then given the opportunity to play <laughs> Johnny Cage in the movie, which he turned down. Oh, wow. To play Guile didn't... in Street Fighter. Yep, yep. <laughs> He sure did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh! Right on, and that was like when he was starting to come down from popular. Uh. Yeah, because he um, if you're listening, Jean Claude, I'm sorry to say this, but you had a bit of a coke problem. <laughs> you did, and you made some really bad decisions towards he, the the mid nineties. He still does. <laughs> he still he does. does. <laughs> oh, you should see his daughter though. I Number know. one. She no, she's beautiful. Okay, uh, all right. And number two, she's an amazing sir. Okay, I'll oh. have to check that out then. Yeah, no, for real. Uh, I wish that she would pursue a movie career, but that's my own selfish. No, <laughs> I have to, I have to like be satisfied. Yeah. Which I love her as a fighter, but she's a terrible. Actor. I love yeah. you, Gina Carano. <laughs> <laughs> she's not good. 
Oh, that's a shame. That's a shame. Uh-huh. Good yeah. fighter, though. Yeah, of course. But that's going to cover it for our fighting games. Yes. Because, yes. ooh, there's been a lot of games, a lot of stuff, and a lot of trivia. But yeah, absolutely. I, I think what's most interesting is actually hearing it from your perspective as someone who is a female fighter. Yeah. Um, and, and that's a thing out there. Uh, listen, if you want to know anything, like, be in the octagon don't be afraid to ask i love talking about it <laughs> yeah you never shut up to me about it i know i love it let's talk about it more <laughs> yes next what week's are... episode is all about mma <laughs> yeah <laughs> no it's like i will sonic. i will say yeah it is it's gonna be sonic i will say this and then we'll move on to the questions yep. uh one of my uh trademark moves in uh kickboxing and mma yep uh i would I would very carefully, uh, I was usually pitted against the new students because uh, yeah. they wouldn't, they were very unassuming. Oh, there's a female, you know, she's not going to do anything to me. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a rule that you need to wear a cup if you're a male. Oh, of course. Uh, most guys aren't fans of wearing cups. They're uncomfortable. So I guess I have to assume, I do not know. Yeah, they um, are uncomfortable. It was my job to check, and check is a, a is is a fighting term. Okay, uh, I know where you're going with this. <laughs> that they were wearing cups. I would Ooh, say yeah. that nine out of ten were never wearing cups, and oh, did they oh, learn? Oh. They learned real fast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, that hurts. That hurts hearing that. Oh, oh, they just need to be glad that I had perfect control over my kids. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's pretty lucky. <laughs> oh, that was a fun time. But I yes. Bet, yeah. <laughs> for me anyway. So if, <laughs> so if there's any 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 feminists out there who don't like <laughs> men, get into MMA because it means you can kick them in the balls. But I love men and I was I know. still like I one one time I I'll, I'll say this. One time uh I stopped my kick right like we're talking right, right there and then yeah. I wiggled my toes. <laughs> Oh no! Oh my, god, oh my gosh! And I was like, "That's right. You better be wearing." <laughs> oh dear. Ah, yeah, that was definitely a fun time. Okay. okay. Anyway, we will move on, on to on. listener questions. Yes. Okay, we've got some sublimely evil ones again, and I love, yes, I love absolutely. it. Absolutely, I do. I okay, do. so we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna start out with the um, the tamest of them all. Yes. Which comes from Thomas at LlamaFluff42 on Twitter. Thoughts, mm-hmm. please, on that Animal Crossing limited edition console. And also, just what is it about Animal Crossing that has such huge appeal across a varied demographic? That's so good. I wish such we a had good Jen, question. Jen to answer this question. I know, she'd be the best to answer this. I know. <laughs> but do you want to take this or should I? Uh... Either way, we could you can start and then I'll join okay. in. Okay, I have no interest in the Animal Crossing limited edition console, and all those people that have gone absolutely haywire about it are a little I, bit crazy. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna say that I'm not a friend a fan of limited edition consoles. Um, <laughs> but the reason why is because I own a printing company and I can print my own yeah, uh, skins <laughs> i mean i think the only ever limited edition uh piece of hardware that i've ever owned was the resident evil 5 red xbox 360 controller because Ooh, nice. it was a red xbox 360 controller and i love red which is your favorite color well i can tell you i can tell you my only of limited edition hardware that i ever bought which would be the Game Boy Advance uh, Zelda. Oh, very The gold nice. one. I have it. I that, still have that, it today. That's very cool. And I'm looking at one now, actually. Yeah. It was given to me <laughs> by someone for my birthday. It's not the All gold right. one. It's actually the, oh. the NES GBA SP. Oh, very nice. Yeah. I'm quite yeah. proud owner of that one. But I didn't buy it, yeah. so I can't count it. But, yeah. <laughs> I mean, each to their own. I'd Absolutely. You if you're massively excited mm-hmm. about Animal Crossing and you want to pre-order one of these limited edition consoles, fair play yeah. to you. They do look really nice. 
They do. They but do. Most of these people yeah. already own two or three switches already. <sighs> oh, so I know. Do you really need to spend three hundred and twenty pound on another. Oh, I, 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 I just couldn't. I couldn't. No, I couldn't oh. do it either. Even makes my I... stomach just drop. Ugh. To be honest with you, the 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 coloured dock and mm -hmm. the the design on the back of the switch are very very nice, but I just don't. They are. I don't are. like the Joy-Con colours. Which is weird because I actually like the Joy Con. <laughs> <laughs> I like pastels. I do. Yeah, that's fair uh, enough. But it does fit yeah. the theme of Animal Crossing. It does. Uh, fair enough. They, ha I actually thought this was going to be a Switch light, but they went full hog and went full Switch. And <laughs> fair enough. Can't I think that, that, yeah, I think they would have to. Mm. I think in Animal Crossing has such a uh, cultish, and I mean that in a good way, not in a bad way. Yeah. A uh, cultish following that uh, it would serve them better to have gone for the full, which they did. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And to ca tackle the second part of this question, mm -hmm. Uh, what is it, Animal Crossing? What is it about Animal Crossing that has uh, such huge appeal across a varied demographic? It's because it appeals to anyone. It's yeah. It's the the long and short of it is that it is a peaceful, relaxing game about a money hungry mortgage advisor who wants to fleece you for all your money. Yes, I mean yes. That's the long and short of. <laughs> yeah, but it does appeal to everyone. It's cutesy. It it's does. It's cutesy art style. It's nice, somber music. You know, the change in seasons constantly. You know, it uh, it's just generally looks like a nice game to play, and you don't get many of those out there apart from, you know, Harvest Moon, I mean, Stardew Valley, and all those well, things. Well, yeah. Those are, I, you know, exact. Uh, I was going to say ripoffs. I didn't mean that. Um, exact clones? clones probably is what i mean more well, harvest, um, harvest moon came first well okay okay that's true um but i i would say that the uh mass appeal is because um i'm going to get a little bit technical here okay. but uh they follow the rules of gamification yeah. which is if you've never heard of gamification uh look it up <laughs> it is <laughs> yeah uh it, it's actually yeah it's uh <laughs> it's it's a really cool it's a psychological term yeah. in this sense that we're using it in um the human brain i mean we're all individuals but overall the human brain kind of follows its own uh formula yep and one thing that it hates more than anything is incompletion um or yeah or non-closure hmm. gamification animal crossing which i love yep. is huge in that area as is most i'm gonna say casual games now i do not use casual gaming as an insult ever i know that yeah. some people do i do not i oh, enjoy casual gaming very much yeah, i hate that term you filthy casual yeah 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 i don't I have patience for yeah. people like that um i i love gaming i also love hardcore gaming i'm both um that. yeah um but uh yeah so i think that the mass it comes to a lot of science gamification and i think they right um and goodness knows i enjoy it <laughs> yeah, nothing wrong with that yeah so i think i think we've answered that question pretty well yeah I love that question. It was good. It was, it Very was good. good one. Thank you, Thomas. Good question. Absolutely. So mm -hmm. this one comes courtesy of one of our writers. In fact, the next two do. But this one is yes. uh, from Chloe. Yes. Uh, who actually does the artwork for our channel. So thank you. Woohoo! So, yeah. Uh, she, you can find her at, on Twitter at Write Blues Away. She asks, <laughs> what game would you introduce to someone who has never played games or hates gaming to convince them to get into it see that one's tough for me easy one because for me. i know because you've had experience yeah. with this <laughs> i already know i already know what you're in yeah. um i again being a female gamer mm -hmm. uh i have a lot of female friends yeah um they're not really into games 
<laughs> like, name Sims. Sims. That that's a universal game that I could show to my friends who are not gamers, uh, who would probably enjoy it. Um, my uh, brother used to tease me and say that it was it was Barbies <laughs> in yeah. game form, which I thought was kind of mean because I didn't even yeah, play that Barbies. Yeah, a bit mean. I was like, I love The Sims, but I don't like Barbie. And he's like, you're yeah. just playing Barbie. Um, but uh, so for me, it would be it would probably be The Sims, just yeah. because that does seem to be kind of universal among my friends. Yep. Uh, outside of that, they don't really game. No. Um, they would no. never be into like Halo or even Subnautica or anything like that. It would have to be something like The Sims. Yeah, of course. I, yeah. I'd probably agree with that. The Sims is a perfect sort of gateway game. Mm -hmm. It's all about... It's very light on its gamey elements, yeah. isn't it? Where it's all yes. about resource management and yes. just just generally keeping Absolutely. the family alive through day-to-day. -day. <laughs> yep. We Unless you know the truth. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I will say this one thing. Go on. Uh, when the very first Sims came out, I think it was on the PlayStation 1, um, yep. I was laying on the couch playing it, and I just had this moment of existential crisis where I was like, I had to go to the bathroom so bad. because didn't want to go out. I didn't want to go because I was playing. <laughs> and then my Sims had to go to the bathroom really bad. Oh, and my then goodness. Didn't, and then they went on, you know, on themselves because yeah. Sims do. Uh, and I was like... I'm gonna stop playing this for a little bit. Yeah, I need to stop playing for a few minutes. Yeah, so I don't actually do this myself. It become a little too real. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, go ahead because I already know what you're gonna say. <laughs> well, do you really? I do. Okay, yeah, it's Untitled Goose Game. <laughs> yeah, I knew it. <laughs> well, the only re well, it's one of two. It's the first one, uh -huh. but mainly because, like I said in a previous podcast, mm -hmm. we mentioned this in the game of the game of the year discussion yes. for 2019. Right. Um, this game got my girlfriend interested in wanting to actually play it. She doesn't yeah. play games, has no interest in playing them. She gets frustrated playing them because she can't. Yeah. So this was the perfect game. She even sat down, had a good laugh, and enjoyed it. So <laughs> I can't complain at that. But absolutely absolutely my second choice and i think this is pretty <laughs> universal for most mario kart i knew you're gonna say mario kart. <laughs> look mario kart appeals to everybody it's so it does. simplistic that even a child can pick it up to be fair i have been at several uh parties yep. of course they're nerd parties because that's all i do um yep. where we've all just Sat down and played a good old round of Mario Kart. Oh, of course you do. Oh, you God. hear about yeah, charity yeah. tournaments that happen on Mario Kart. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, Absolutely. There's someone that I follow on Twitter who recently had that at her work, which was quite cool. That is so, very cool. Yeah, yeah so, you're right. That is you. Exactly. Is Mario good. Kart appeals to everybody. You can't knock it. Mm -hmm. And yeah. yeah. So I think that's probably the best way to go. Absolutely. Okay. Do you want to read this last question? <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> I do love this question. Ah, this one comes to us courtesy of at Gamer Dad Journal. Go follow him because he's got great content. Yep. Um, and his question, which is so evil, I love it. It's tasty. Um, oh, it's so tasty. Oh, yum, 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 yum. Um, <laughs> which Pokemon do you think would taste the best? And how would you cook and serve it? So this covers both our favorite subjects of food and video game. <laughs> it does. Now, I will say, though, it isn't specified which generation. Yep. Um, so I've, I've kind of... Shall we stay 151? Well, I mean, that's what I need to know. Are we going, you know, outside our generation one or... Generation one. Look, I barely know anything outside of generation one anyway, so we'll stick with generation okay. one. Okay. <laughs> okay. Then I know <laughs> okay. people are gonna think I'm the devil. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Because we're staying with generation one. Yep. Because if I was to eat a Pokemon, it would be because of survival. Of course. I <laughs> 
I would have Snorlax. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I can, I can see it. And I would, I would make him low and slow. Sorry, what? Ah, uh, I would bake him in the phrase that us Texans use to describe barbecue, oh, which is yeah. low and slow, which is low heat for a few hours. A, a few hours? I thought it was like twelve. Well, yeah, it, it can be up to forty-eight. Oh, wow. Um, okay. I have, I have smoked and cooked meat for 48 hours. Oh, God. wow. Uh, so I, I think that, uh, the Snorlax would be a perfect choice for this because you know, he's got that lovely layer of fat. Yeah. That's going to be some tasty that would just, meat. Oh, that's going to be just a tasty, <laughs> tasty meat. Okay. <laughs> Oh my gosh! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, now I thought a bit more logically about this one. Okay. Do you want to know what my my mind frame was here? <laughs> sure. Thinking of stuff that is already technically food. Uh huh. So I came up with a couple, but I'll go right. with this one as my answer. Uh -huh. Kingla. <laughs> because it is a giant crab, and I had, <laughs> I'd stick it in a yes! boiling pot of water and just boil it away. <gasps> Oh my gosh, that is perfect. Yeah, you can't, can't beat a bit of crab meat. <laughs> I, I'll tell you who I... Who... Yeah. Now that you've said that, uh, that was Mudkip. Absolutely. Nice. <laughs> yes, yes. What? I hear you like Mudkips. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> because being from Texas, we have what's called catfish. Oh, yeah. I can't remember what it's called here. River something. It's It's... Oh, I know. They what you sell mean. it here. Yeah. Oh, I'm so mad. I blanked out on that. But um, we call it catfish. Yeah. Um, and I assume that mudkip would be very similar to catfish. Yeah. <laughs> I, I would imagine it would be as well. Oh. I mean, the other two answers I would have had for this was probably magic uh -huh. carp. Oh, yes. Okay. Fish. Along the same lines. But yep. If I wanted to be a little bit more crazy, I would have gone with Blastoise. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow! Yeah, Very like good. A bit of reptile. Yeah, exactly. You know, I I've had crocodile. So. Well, there you go. <laughs> of course you would. But then if, again, if I could we... have also said um, Paris or Parasect because they're mushrooms. Oh gosh, yes. Well, um, if we had gone off of uh, uh, Generation One, I would have picked Taypig, which is clearly. A pig. Yep. <laughs> he goes. He he evolves into night, which uh, just sounds like some tasty bacon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I love bacon. So. Mm, bacon. Oh yeah. And then there's a grump pig. Yeah. I I know, I'm just bit. trying to think of Jen's like because obviously I've played like Sun and Moon. I'm just trying to think of yeah like, Seven's ones that like that actually look like they could be food. Oh gosh! I don't know. I'd I'll tell a... you, I uh huh. Uh, I'd be a bit wrong to say I wanted to eat Lit and the kitten. <laughs> um. Well, I'll tell you who I'd stay away from. Absolutely, it would be a little too uh uh uh. Oh crap! What is it when you eat your own cannibalistic? Uh, yeah. Oh, uh, Mister Mine. <laughs> Okay, I'm picking. Uh, I was gonna say I'll uh, pick one that I can't eat, but I don't know. Mm, not sure. I don't know if there's one that I can't eat, but one I. Uh, Jigglypuff. I I don't know. Would Jiggly? It would just be a giant taste... marshmallow. Well, I was gonna say, would it taste like cream, like a cream puff? Yeah, I I, yeah. I would say stick some chocolate on there and make some s'mores. Oh, Jigglypuff. <laughs> <laughs> As it's burning alive. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> this got dark really quickly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have to dark. Okay, one that you definitely can't eat. Trubbish um, or Garbador. Because they're just giant trash sacks. Yeah, I don't want to taste that ever. Yeah, no thanks. Um, I'm sure the, the stench would be bad enough. I am like... Vomiting in my mouth. Yeah. Um. <laughs> we'll move on then, shall we, to our outro. 
Also, well, one thing I would. I like Mankey. The monkey? Manky. Yeah. I like him. It's definitely a bit manky, though. Ah, yes, he would be a bit manky. <laughs> <laughs> you led me ah, right into that poor joke. I did. I did. I did. I walked you right up to the door and pushed you through. <laughs> so, yeah, I didn't have to do anything. No, you didn't. <laughs> um, but that about wraps it up for us. Uh, we are very, very happy that you joined us um, this week. And I am being very biased, but I just want to say we've got the best listeners in the history of ever, and they provide us with the best questions in they the do. history of ever. So, <laughs> I love them. Yeah, please keep them uh, coming because we love these yeah. amazing questions you give us every week. Oh, absolutely. And, uh, you know, share and, you know, subscribe and comment and tell us, give us feedback, rate us, yeah, rate us, give us feedback, because this show is for you guys. Um, And, you know, we just shape it and stuff for you. Yep. Um, And we could stop at any time. No, I'm joking. I wouldn't stop. (laughs) I wouldn't stop for no reason. No way, I look forward to it every every week. It is um, one of the joys of my week, to be honest. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so if you want to join us uh, online, you can find us at www.rapidreviewsuk.com mm-hmm. or you can talk to us via Twitter at Rapid Reviews UK mm-hmm. or our uh, podcast-specific um twitter which is at rr radio pod yep and where can they find you they can find me just rambling away on the twitter sphere <laughs> at pete beckett one and beckett is spelled b-e-c-k-e-t-t and where can um, they find <clears throat> you yes you can find me at kylie twitch h-g-r-e-e-t where i am currently twittering about Inventions and uh, autism. So, <laughs> a great combination. Um, and then, if you happen to be on Facebook, uh, you can also find us there at Rapid UK. Blimey, I'm surprised you remembered that one. I'm looking right at it and I That's read it. True. And uh, we have a new uh, email address as well. mm-hmm. questions and feedback and just everything. Yeah, you're bored. You just want to write some nonsense, send yeah. it to us. Uh, yeah, if you which want to is... write something that's more than uh, 280 characters. Right, exactly. Um, so you can send that to us at puck at rapidreviewsuk.com. Excellent. So that ends this week's show. Yes. So nearly. that leaves nearly. We have one last thing. Yep. So Pete, hit us with that game fact. Okay. So... I'm glad you mentioned this place earlier. I'm glad. Oh, great. And you okay. mentioned something to do with this company earlier, too. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. And listeners, he makes me not game fact. I never know what it is I when like he you says to be it. Surprised. I, I like it, too. So, did so. you know that Nolan mm-hmm. Bushnell, the founder of Atari, <laughs> uh-huh. also founded the famous kids' fast food chain Chuck E. Cheese? As what? a way to get kids to play Atari arcade games. Really? Yes. That makes so much sense. That goes thing I said earlier. <laughs> <laughs> ah, well, thank you guys for joining us. That was amazing. That was a great wrap up. Um, and we hope that you join us next week. Yep. So we will talk to you guys next week. <laughs> okay. Bye. Bye. Bye.